25,735. On September 17, 2016, the all-time attendance record was set at Paulson Stadium. It's time to break that record. Clay Helton called for a packed Paulson Stadium, and his wish was granted. A sellout as Freedom Eagle makes his flyover prior to this runout, setting up a big conference matchup in the Sun Belt between Coastal Carolina and Georgia Southern. A chance for Georgia Southern to make perhaps their biggest national statement stage during the Clay Helton era, taking on this Coastal Carolina team, trying to avoid an 0-2 start in conference play, which could really be uncharted waters for them. Tioka Jackson, Jason Rush Jr., welcome you to the booth. Thanks for having us. When you look at this matchup, Clay Helton told us, Tioka, in order to be the best in the division, you got to beat the best in the division. Opportunity served up on a platter for you today. Look, there's perhaps no better brand in this conference than Coastal Carolina. So Georgia Southern knows in order to get where they want to go, they've got to go through these Santa Clairs. And the good news is they have them in an electric atmosphere tonight. Speaking of electric, talk about these passing games. Two best in the conference. Begin with the receivers for Coastal Carolina. There's a plethora of them. They're fun to watch. Yeah, and those guys do it with size and length. Brown is... A demon as it relates to all-purpose yards. He does a little bit of everything. And Sam Pinckney, some people think, is the best NFL prospect in the entire conference. He's six foot four, 220 pounds, and can fly. Take a look on the other side. Southern receivers we're going to watch today. They hit 11 different targets last week. Well, they do it with speed and quickness. They have little guys. They got about six of them that can really play. And these are two of the best right now uh, on their team. And Burgess Jr. gets away with tremendous quickness and separation. Separation. Hood is the exact same way. They are the leaders of one of the best passing offense in all of college football. Right, let's talk about the guys that are throwing the football to them. One of the reasons why Sunbelt football has been so fun to watch is because the quarterbacks are so experienced. Start with Coastal Carolina, Grace McCall. He's as experienced as you can get. No doubt. And I think these two guys present the best quarterback matchup we'll see all year. And McCall has had a stranglehold on the player of the year hardware in this conference. He's been amazing, as you see, three-time defending Sunbelt player of the year. He can run it. He can throw it. He is a legend around the comp the Santa Clears campus. And Davis Brent has come in and been simply sensational. One bad half of football is all that separates him from probably being the front runner for player of the year in this conference. And Grayson McCall's new coach this year is Tim Beck. In his first season, first year with this staff, they're coming off a 30-17 to loss to Georgia State. So, 0-1 in conference play. First time during Grayson McCall's tenure as a starter. They aren't 4-0 through four weeks. They're facing some adversity, but trying to battle through it. Then you look at Clay Helton in his second season. He's really flipped it around. 3-1 start. They're 2-0 at home and have created this atmosphere that they were so excited for. It's a big stage with big conference implications. Clay Helton knows it. And the fans know it. And that's why they packed this place. Georgia Southern will kick off today. Michael Lance will have the duties. And back to return for Coastal Carolina is Matthew McDoom and Jared Brown. Javon Simpkins back as well. Buckle up. This should be fun. David Simpkins will watch that one fly over his head. And out comes that experienced QB we talked about, Grayson McCall, North Carolina native who entered the portal but opted to stay. He's Mr. Coastal Carolina for a reason. Surpassed a 10,000-yard mark for his career last week. He's a legend. I mean, let's just be honest. I mean, he's done some amazing things, but he's breaking in a new offense. He's gotten better every single week. He's starting to play some of his best ball. I expect him to be the, at his best because they're going to need him to be in order to get this road win. Everyone in Polson on their feet for this opening play. That's a Grayson McCall run. Brought down there. Mike Kennedy Roberts was in the mix. Justin Rhodes. We saw man coverage across the board right there. And, and I'm just telling you right now, Georgia Southern better be careful because this guy can run. If you have defenders with their back to the quarterback trying to play man coverage, he will run for well over 100 yards tonight. 
Braden Bennett swings out, kind of looks like a receiver. Now he lines up as one. So they've got five and an empty backfield from McCall. Finds Jared Brown. That ball deflected in and out of his hands. Nice play defensively there from Mark Stampley. Boy, did you see him bat that ball, Jason? I, I love when defenders play to the whistle. That was a catch initially. But Stampley said, no, it's not a catch because I'm going to finish with strong hands and get that ball on the ground third down. Tyaka, this is one of your keys for the Georgia Southern defense, getting this coastal team that's been really good on third down off the field. Yeah, they're going to have to string together first downs. But first things first, they better get this front because they really rushed the pass so well at Georgia Southern. They weren't afraid to blitz. They bring the heat. McCall throws once Brown, and he caught it. Down inside of the 40. We talked about Georgia Southern bringing these blitzes. Might be willing to gamble, and Coastal Carolina hit him deep. Well, you can gamble if you want, but you better get there because they've got a plethora of guys can beat man coverage, and this time it's Jared Brown getting dialed up. And that's probably the best defender on the field for Georgia Southern. Great job. If, if, if Grayson McCall lays it out a little bit further, we might be striking up the band. Chunk gain there sets up Coastal and plus territory. And now McCall keeps it. The veteran who knows this is relatively earlier in the season, week five, but it feels like crunch time. You do not want to go 0-2 in conference play. He hasn't done that before as a starter. There is no question about it. And the interesting thing is he's coming out of a spread gun option offense for the last three years. He's played a lot of hero ball in his work. He's been the conference player of the year. They want him to go through his progressions a little bit more. But what I'm seeing today is they're deciding they're going to spread this defense out and allow him to be a runner. I think that's smart. They run it with Bennett, and he's met promptly. Latrell Bullard, big number 57, came in to make the play there. Isaac Walker off the edge as well. I think a, a sneaky key to this game for both offenses will be, will they be able to show some balance? Will they have some semblance of being able to do two things, run it and throw it, because both of these defenses can tee off after the quarterback. Another third down. They opt to run it interestingly and be getting spun down is Braden Bennett. When I watched Braden Bennett run on film. He reminds me of a young DeMarco Murray. He's big, he's fast, he's long for the position. I, I really like, I think they, they think he's an NFL player. I do as well. Maybe not quite as nifty in the open field as DeMarco Murray, but he's got all the other attributes and he can catch the football out of the backfield. Decision time early for Ghost of Carolina offensive coordinator Travis Trinket to go for it on fourth and two. Very aggressive. I like it. Why not on the stage like this? McCall pitches it. Bennett has the first down and more. Inside of the 15, down at the six-yard line. Well, listen, Grayson McCall, we talked about, he's an option guy. <laughs> They're putting him in position where he's familiar. And this is about decision-making. Option the end player. If he takes the quarterback, you make the pitch and let your back do the work. That's perfect decision-making from a guy who's running offense like that for a long time. What a gutsy call early. <laughs> Very aggressive. I like it. Though. And they cash in. Yeah, you get, this is a big game, man. I mean, I know it's early in the conference season, but this is a win you got to get on the road. McCall tucks it again. McCall into the end zone for the game's opening touchdown. The road team strikes first. An early silencer. Well, they talked about how much hero ball he's been playing lately, and that's usually what gets him in trouble. They want to stay in the system. Well, listen, the system has decided today they're going to ride the hero. They're putting the ball in his hands and letting him do it, just spreading the defense out. And this is a quarterback draw. This is a design run. And when you spread these defenders out, you're light in the box, and he is one of the best in the country at seeing it and finding open gaps. Liam Gray able to tack on the extra point of the game's opening touchdown drive. And what a clinical drive it was, including a couple of key third down conversions and a fourth down conversion. They've been one of the best at that in the country so far, and it results with a Grayson McCall touchdown. Fittingly, the veteran gets it done early. Welcome back. Colson Stadium just watched Coastal Carolina drive all the way down the field. 7-0 start. 
this Georgia Southern crowd that's bringing the heat tonight is hoping to watch their team answer back. That's the man who struck first in what's an awesome quarterback battle tonight, Grayson McCall. On the flip side, Davis Brin is gearing up. And first, this kickoff on the horizon. Liam Gray will boot it downfield, and now out comes the Georgia Southern offense for the first time today. Led by Davis Brin, who transferred in from Tulsa, played his first five seasons there. This is an offense that had Kyle Van Trees play in the QB position a season ago, Tioka. Guy who threw 27 touchdown passes. Davis Brin has slid in pretty seamlessly. He really has, and I think he's leaning on all of that experience he got at Tulsa. He's a two-year starter. So he's played a lot of football before he got here. And I think this system matches him well. He chose the right portal option coming to this offense. They're one of the best in America with him as the captain. Was incredibly efficient a week ago in Georgia Southern's dominant 40 to 3 win over Ball State. You were there for that one. Went 34 for 46, four touchdowns. Trying to pick up where he left off. Goes to the air on his first throw. Has a first down completion with Caleb Hood. Pushed out of bounds, quick game. Hood had seven catches, 107 a week ago. How about picking up right here? Well, listen, I, when I watch and evaluate quarterbacks, or any player for that matter, I'm looking for superpowers. And Davis Brand, his superpower is accuracy. You're going to see ball placement and accuracy as good as it gets. May not have a cannon for an arm, but his anticipation and accuracy is stellar. They're running the tight end. McAfee in motion set up to block this time for Hood. You get some blockers in front of him, and they can go quickly. This is that tempo you talked about. It is. They want to run up plays. Pace and space. You hear that associated with basketball very often? Well, that's what this offense is about. They're going to space you out. They're going to go fast, and they're going to get their playmakers the ball in space so they can make you miss and get big plays. Our awesome production crew just showed you J.J. McAfee coming over to block. These tight ends are big. He's 6'3", 240. Keaton up Shaw plays as well. He's 6'7", 245. He'll flip it out. Jalen White back in the lineup today. Didn't play a week ago. Swung down that time by Shane Bruce. What a play by Bruce because 25 is a good player. Jalen oh, yeah. White, they are so happy to have him back. They say he's an NFL player. Very complete. Probably their best guy in terms of the National Football League. They say he's going to be a draft pick, but right there, Shane Bruce was having none of it. <laughs> it's a nice open field tackle. And they're going to have to make open field tackles all night. Bruce is the guy you asked who's your toughest guy. They listed him pretty quickly. Another quick throw. Speaking of tempo here, Derwin Burgess on the receiving end. His first grab of the night. It's so interesting. You see a lot of offenses call these plays early to get their quarterback warmed up. Well, this is their base offense. This is what Brian Ellis likes to do with his quarterbacks. These are high percentage throws that allow their athletes to go to work. And because of the accuracy, so often they're catching the ball in the run. Hasn't felt like a warm-up for opposing defenses this year. <laughs> Doesn't feel like a warm-up for us either. Because you got to be locked in with these guys. Got to be ready. Big third down opportunity for Deshaun's defense, though, to get off the field. Something they haven't done well so far this year. Bryn, plenty of time. Pocket crumbles, and he goes down. So the shots defense steps up on the opening drive, and they sack Davis Bryn. Alan Henry was in there. This time to clear defense is very aggressive. They're going to bring guys. And you see a line stunt right there. That was a TE stunt on the right side of the screen. And Braylon Ryan came in underneath right here. Boom. Collisions. You can get blocked, but don't stay blocked. Get off the block. But that was great coverage downfield. When you see that quarterback hesitate, the rush needs to get there. And that's what you saw. Jared Brown's back to return this punt. Alex Smith, the 6'6 freshman punter from Melbourne, Australia. And deliver it downfield. Oh, and Brown dropped it dangerously and scooped it back up. 8.46 to go in this opening quarter. Coastal Carolina scored first on the legs of Grayson McCall. They hit some deep shots. Jared Brown was a part of it. Bennett got involved as well. But it was McCall who ultimately finished it off. The veteran legs got the party started today. Now they're set to make their way back out onto the field. Grayson McCall, only player in conference history to earn Sunbelt Player of the Year three different times. And you look at the history here of players to do that in FBS history. Herschel Walker, not that company. Are you, do you even know who he is? You're so young, you don't even know who that is. I, I, know, I know who that is. He's 
Tiger. Tiger is definitely, okay. Let me slow down. Yeah, probably the great, maybe the greatest uh, college player of all time. They flip it out to Brown, who's been the go-to target so far. They called him our lightning in the bottle. He's like their, their Tyreek Hill. That's who they want him to be. You're seeing a lot of similar plays from these offenses. High percentage throws, allowing their athletes to run with the football. Defensively, the whole key will be, can you make the tackle you're supposed to make? Or will you miss the tackle and the ball goes from being a three or four yard game to a 40 yard game? We're staying ahead of the change right now. Second and six coming up here. They've been doing this very well, the deception on the run game so far. Nice tackle, though, made out in space by Marquez Watson Trent. We know he'll be very key today for this defense. Williams out there as well. And now we have a Coastal Carolina player down on the field here. from where we are. That's Thomas Johnson popping up. Good to see that. They're starting center, but is hobbling off there. Not really able to put weight on that left leg. Rich Eisen, Kurt Warner, Michael Irvin, Steve Mariucci, Gerald McCoy, Cynthia Freeland, Kimmy Checks, Daniel Jeremiah, the NFL insiders and reporters at stadiums across the country get you set for kickoff with NFL game day morning, Sunday at 9 a.m. Eastern, only on NFL Network. The entire crew have you prepped and ready tomorrow morning. Meanwhile, that's alert for a backup center, and we've got to make sure this snap is going to be clean. Tyler Wagner is the backup. And this crowd is not going to make it easier for them to hear up on that line. Another third down conversion for Coastal Carolina. Already their second. They have a fourth down conversion as well on the receiving end is Sam Pinckney. Well, first things first, let's give Evan Jumper some love on the snap. Good enough. And then Pinkney, if you're going to play off coverage and man, forget about it. When you're six foot four and 220 pounds, there's no shot for the DB to make a play on the ball if the if the throw is accurate. Grayson called delivered. Yeah, they bring in Evan Jumper as the backup center here, and his first play well executed. It was a gain of 10. McCall keeps it again. It was deceptive. He'll be marked where that slide began, which is short of the yard to gain by a yard. How slick was the slide, though? It was <laughs> pretty slick. Credit. Yes, because I thought he was going to get lit up. I saw a defender coming from the inside out, and you watch it again. There's nobody home to take the quarterback. Nice job of getting down. They're running the quarterback. We know if you run the quarterback, you might get hit, and you might get hit hard. T.J. Smith was coming to take him out. Really slick slide by Grayson McCall. Tayoka doesn't seem like the Georgia Southern defense right now knows that he's running the football. He's either pitching it or keeping it. And that's been a challenge. This time it's not a challenge. Woo! Had that one snuffed out. Isaac Walker in there again along with Wallace. Quick penetration. You see another line stunt. Great job of getting into the backfield and blowing up that running game by Isaac Walker. And once you make that back stutter, the Cavalry's coming. And this Cavalry for Georgia Southern is great. They hustle and run the football with the best of them. Yet another third down. This has been common territory so far for Coastal Carolina. Zone coverage here, Jason. They converted on two out of three so far. McCall buying time, throwing, intercepted. Picked off by Demel Hickman. Nice adjustment by defensive coordinator Brandon Bailey. A lot of man coverage early on. He decided to go with zone. That forced McCall right here. He's trying to read it out. He's looking for man. It's not there. Now he's got to figure out where am I going with this ball. Look at that play right there. Demel Hickman is their best defensive back, their best cover guy, I should say. See the turn, the zone turn, stand with him, plaster. 
great job of getting around and making a great play with your hands, though. I like the idea of not just trying to bat, bat the ball down, Jason. Go get the football. It's as much yours as it is the receivers. It's his first interception of the season. They call him their best cover corner. Yeah. And he shows up big early on in this game. A Georgia Southern team that has one loss on the year at Wisconsin in Madison. They were tied at the half in that game despite having four first half turnovers. If this team can stay on the plus side, the, uh, the good side of the turnover battle, they have a lot of potential this year. They're down a score, but up in the turnover battle as they go to the grounds here. And that game against Wisconsin, again, tied at the half, early lead in the second half. It was a game where head coach Clay Helton felt maybe it got a little too emotional. And he told us today, whoever can handle the emotions best, great atmosphere today, perhaps the biggest FBS stage of this program's so far, with Georgia Southern at least. That's going to be the key today. Well, he one of the best... You know, we we're talking about it after the snap, but uh, snap. They're able to pull it down. That's going to be a flag free play. Well, Bryn was kind of bent down initially, and then that led to the inadvertent face mask, but definitely a face mask from Coastal Carolina. Say hello to Jeremy Parker for the first time today, our referee. And here's the face mask. Now, look, you're trying to get a rush. You're trying to reach and grab what you can grab, but that's a no-no. And obviously, it's not intentional. But see, he's just trying to reach right now. He's trying to reach and make a play, and that's just unfortunate. That's the right call. Can't do it. Will Whitson, the transfer from Independent CC, the guilty party there, Davis Brin. Time to throw. And down the sideline, DB there, Matthew McDoom was back in coverage. There is another flag down. That was a miscommunication between Brennan and Caleb Hood. Expected Hood to go down the field and run that fade route, or that go route, I should say, and Hood broke it off to a seven route. Gonna push Georgia Southern back. First and 20. Coming up now. Run Dalen Cobb in motion. That's who they want. And they found him to get a good chunk of that yardage back. So they get the holding call, Jason, that backs him up and can figure, okay, what does Brian Ellis come up with to get that chunk yards back? And, and he, what he did was a sister play that I'd love to be to talk about later on, but they're going so fast, we got to stay on schedule. <laughs> got to keep up with their pace, <laughs> <That's right>. <laughs> That was a gain of 12. They want more. Back to the passing game. Bryn's going to keep it. He ran track in high school. Gets more of this yardage back. Gonna bring up what should be a third and two here. This offense has been up tempo as, as you anticipated as you watched last week at Ball State to see some of their numbers on the season. Plays per game they get in, 10th in the FBS. Wouldn't surprise me at all if they try. To run this football for this first down and try to establish with Jalen White some dominance up front. They bring in J.C. French for QB here, and he'll take it with his legs. I'm not sure if he got enough. But it is close. They gave it to him. They bring in the transfer from Memphis, who's 6'1", 205, and maybe every ounce of that weight got the inch he needed. J.C. French ran for a lot of red zone touchdowns in high school. Roswell, Georgia native, back in his home state. They bring Davis Brin back in. You see his numbers today. As efficient as he could be, 5 of 5. Brin fakes the shovel. More deception here. Wants the end zone. That is broken up. Clayton Isbell, who we talked about 
and talked to the other day steps up key transfer in that secondary makes yeah. a big play we asked him who's his favorite nfl player he said derwin james <laughs> that's a great guy to model yourself after he loves his versatility and isbell's the same i mean this is really outstanding coverage going up the scene Now second and ten. We've seen a good blend of deep shots and underneath plays. They go back underneath here. Elijah Walton makes the catch. Gets about six. Bring up another third and short. JT killing on the tackle. Talked about the ability to make the right tackle at the right time in space. That time Shane Bruce missed it. You got to keep these receivers balled up. When they catch the they're going to catch the ball in front of you. You got to come up, make sure tackles, and make sure they get no rack yards. Run after catch. And that linebacker crew for Coastal Carolina doesn't miss a lot of tackles. No. Meanwhile, Georgia Southern knocking on the door of an answer after they forced a turnover by way of an interception. Man coverage. Third and two. They opt to throw it. We'll see if they have enough for the first down here on the Caleb Hood reception. They do have enough. They're going to move the chains again. Hood limps off a bit. We'll keep track of his status. Such a key piece of the offense for Georgia Southern. He's already been involved a lot early on. That ball's coming out quick, Jason. One of the things with that quick throwing is it just takes and eliminates the pass rush. And there's no chance to get a pass rush when the ball is coming out this quick. It becomes very discouraging for these rushers. Bryn, another quick throw. Know where he was going. Derwin Burgess made a nifty move, and a flag was thrown on the outside portion of the field. Tobias Fletcher came over to make the tackle. a little fluttered there but we know it's going against Georgia Southern gonna set them back at a crucial spot of the field that's a, that's a costly costly penalty there you had momentum obviously you're deep into the red zone appeared to be pass interference wasn't exactly sure the rest of his call though their head coach Clay Helton knows how important each moment is tonight each opportunity this is dangerously. Who's going to get this? He had to just go over and kind of spike it down like a volleyball player did Davis Brin after he threw it. I mean, that hung in the air for what felt like a decade. And that, that's the experience. I mean, he looks like Mount Matumbo spiking that ball <laughs> down. I mean, but that's smart, though, because he knows it's a high chance this is going the other way. He sees it. Don't, don't try to catch it. We don't need to take hits. Just bat that baby down. That's volleyball all day. Koch Karai. Go Google that name. One of the greatest... Yeah. Olympic volleyball players of all time. Southern California guy. Bryn with more time to throw, and he utilizes it. Able to find Dalen Cobb. Reached for the end zone. Did he get in? Looks like they're marking him one yard short on a gain of 27. What a beautiful job of going through the entire route tree of the combination that's called. He's looking at his first receiver and then goes down the seam to the second receiver. It's a great job. Not a great job of tackling, but it's on the clear defense. They bring the back White, who returns this week after not playing a week ago, into the shotgun. Then refs blow it dead. Green on the field is a catch. The previous play, as you heard there, is under review. Rule to catch on the field. That's because he was reaching for that end zone. They're trying to figure out if he pierced the, the end zone before the knees down, before stepping out of bounds. And whenever you look at these calls, the first thing you have to remember is the call in the field was that he was short. So the evidence, the video replay has to say, and, and, and it has to say conclusively that the call in the field was incorrect. And that was very close. There are some moments here where you need to keep an eye on the toes and the white. Maybe Ooh. there. <laughs> it's close. 
and maybe there. Oh. So I don't think there's enough there conclusively saying he did not step out to reverse the call. Those first two, to me, look like he probably didn't step out. That third step, though, I think he probably did. But when you start talking probably and maybe and reviews, that means you have to leave the call in the field alone. It looks like the game to a decision pretty quickly. Ruling of the runner being out of bounds at the two-yard line stands. First and goal. And notice he didn't say confirmed, right? It just wasn't conclusive one way or the other, so he just leave it alone and play. And I like how quickly he got to that decision. You and I have been there, and we're just standing here forever with the replay over and over. No, let's go. Come on. We, this crowd, this sellout crowd didn't come to, to watch the replay officials. They no. came to watch football. It's a beautiful scene here at Bolson Stadium, and they're all on their feet with their team on the two-yard line, knocking on the door in this heavyweight fight between two divisional opponents playing a game with heavy implications. Jalen White is the back. They brought Quilly in motion. Coastal Carolina had to make a late decision on it. And White tries to plunge his way in. Looks to be short. On the first and goal opportunity as the first, down, first quarter clock starts to wind down here. Inside of 10 seconds to go. That'll be the final play of an entertaining opening quarter. Feels like a dramatic stage each moment with different individual aspects of drama in their own right. It's lived up to the billing. Grayson McCall scored the first touchdown, but Georgia Southern knocking on the door in front of their home fans when we come back. That works Saturday night, college football. First visit to Statesboro, Georgia for our NFL Network slate. Home of Georgia Southern football. Tim Beck's team trying to avoid an 0-2 start in conference play. Georgia Southern wants the end zone here. They go for it and they have it. Derwin Burgess makes the touchdown grab and Georgia Southern is on the board. So Jason Burgess was not the intended receiver initial, initially. That's a great job by Brent. He's trying to get the underneath route, but it was so well covered that he had to come off and find Burgess crossing in the back of the end zone, and that's a tight window throw, and that's excellent execution of that offensive play. Michael Lance on to attempt the extra point. Peachtree City, Georgia native, able to tie up the game early in this second quarter. Jason, the ability to come off of primary receivers and find secondary receivers, it takes time. This offensive line has been amazing pass blocking all year. We'll be right back. The Coastal Carolina offense will try to answer on the other side. Meet the man. What's up? All knotted up. 7-7. Two divisional opponents in a game that you think down the stretch will have massive conference implications. Coastal Carolina picked to finish third in the division. They won it a season ago, though. So maybe they feel a bit disrespected there. Clay Helton's team was picked to finish fifth. They said, we've always had champions of expectations. They won six FCS titles throughout the course of this program's history. Clay Helton in his second season as head coach. Their best start under him, and these fans know it. And they packed this place for him. His offense knotted up the game. David Simpkins to return this for Coastal Carolina. Brings it out to about the 20-yard line. <laughs> So now second quarter begins, and Coastal Carolina comes out for their opening offensive drive of the quarter. They scored in their opening offensive drive of the first quarter. Can they replicate that success here? Seven different receivers 
caught a pass last week. That was a 30 to 17 loss to Georgia State. They're already off to a much better start than they had in that game a week ago. The sold out crowd is letting McCall hear it all. And that one was bobbled and nearly intercepted again. Look who was in the area. Demel Hickman watched it coming over to make the play, though. Looks like Tari and Lee. Very dangerous throw. I mean, he can throw it from the wide side of the hash all the way over to the other side. But what I, what I saw there was a bunch of defenders in blue. But Georgia Southern, they knew exactly what was coming. They knew it was going to be a quick throw because it was empty. Right over by the Georgia Southern student section is where this drive is starting out. They run it up the middle, flag goes flying, carrying tacklers. A freshman, highly touted recruit who just returned that kick. Get Evan Jumper, who again is slotting in for Thomas Johnson at the starting center spot. Johnson went down. Jumper goes in. That's the thing about football. You got to have quality depth. You got to have people who can step right in and make plays for you, no matter position. And Evan Jumper that time got caught with the, his hands in the cookie jar. Georgia Southern defense is going to bring the heat all day. They get beat here, though, and it's the go-to target for Coastal Carolina, Jared Brown, who's able to make yet another catch. Well, that's the RPO game, and this is what Grayson McCall excels at. Watch the ball get put in the belly of the runner and pull it out. And that ball is out in a hurry on target where it needs to be so that his guy can catch it and run with the football. Nice job, Jared Brown, of running that slant. See the numbers for Brown. Third down, been the common theme so far for Coastal Carolina. Here they come. McCall wants it all in the air. And that is incomplete. Looking for Tyson Mobley. You know, the coverage there with Shamar Bartholomew. Well, listen, I, I like the no call. They were tight. That's tight coverage. There's some contact. Both guys are entitled to their grasp, but I didn't see anything from the defensive back or from the coverage that would warn a foul. Tyson Mobley wanted it. That's really good position. I'd like to see Shamar Bartholomew get his hands on the receiver, but other than that, no, that, there's nothing there. That's, that's good football, and that's a great job by the official not to overreact and throw the flag. Bartholomew, the 60-year player, transfer from Northwestern State. On the one-on-one -on -one coverage there, Caleb Hood back to return. This punt from Evan Crenshaw. Hood takes an opportunity here. Crowd liked that he took the opportunity, got up to the 34. Pretty decent starting field position for Davis Brin coming up. Statesboro, the NFL London games kick off tomorrow at 9.30 a.m. Eastern exclusively on ESPN+. Plus. The Falcons take on the Jags live from London at the historic Wembley Stadium. Also get the Toy Story, fun day football version of it. Now, why didn't they have stuff like that when I was playing in the league? So cool, so cool. Sheesh, I was born too early. Davis Grin. Throws that back, just <laughs> had to improvise. They're going to lose some yardage here, though, as Caleb Hood is dropped down by a plethora of white jerseys. So this is an interesting play. This is a new wave triple option. You fake the dive. Now the quarterback goes around the corner. He can run or pass it out. 
He decided to throw it out, but that was great coverage on the outside. So it was a beautiful design, fun to watch, but three-yard loss. Georgia Southern head coach Clay Helton studied mechanical engineering and mathematics in, in college. He likes, he loves angles, loves angles. Some trickery here. Speaking of angles to work with, Taylor Cobb had one. Burst ahead to get some of that yardage back. Cut down by Juan Powell. Well, they're going to find ways to get Cobb the football because of his dynamic nature. But watch the defense going coast to coast and coming out and sawing the legs off of the runner was number zero, Juan Powell, who offensive coordinator Brian Ellis says is their best player. And the transfer from East Carolina. He's back in his home state, Atlanta native. Playing in his home state tonight. 19 Georgia natives on the Coastal Carolina roster. Davis Brin steps up. One in McAfee there. Unable to find him, and now this Georgia Southern offense will come off on fourth down. So the teams exchange punts for the first time today. That's just wonderful defense by the Santa Clears because that drive started in very good field position for the Eagles. And the Shaws basically shut the offense down. You go three and out and force a punt. That's, a, that's, the, that's how you play defense right there. Situational football. If you allow a drive, it's going to sort of tip the field position against you. They didn't allow it. Jared Brown is one of those 19 Georgia natives on the Coastal Carolina roster. Is back to return this punt. High snap for the Aussie Alex Smith. And this one takes a Georgia Southern roll. Down inside of the 15. Should have fielded that ball. You know, I don't like when they let that ball bounce. That's like that. one of your pet peeves. <laughs> we'll step aside for more Tyoka Jackson pet peeves when we come back. 11.53 to go in the second. Sunday at 9. Back on NFL Network College Football Saturday night. Mentioned some Tyoka Jackson pet peeves. Your pet peeve is missing meals. These mm. were, well, that was the, the, the very, very good crab soup. It was nice and thick. A lot of good food around this area. The fried shrimp on the plate. And then fresh caught shrimp as well. Something you can get oh, down in the steaks. southern part of Georgia. Steaks, oh. poppers. Just a phenomenal I, now, wait this a picture. Minute. We took know, about 30 pictures, and that was the worst our, one of all. Our producer, all. Jeff Graham, likes to make fun of us pretty don't, often. Don't I think he deliberately did that. Kevin no Shank, as well, director, yeah. does an awesome job when he's directing, when he comes to taking pictures of us. We have other words for him. Jared Brown brought down promptly that time by Terry and Lee. Well, the thing about these outside screens, smoke screens, tunnel screens, if you're in man coverage defensively, you can make a play if you beat the block. And so it can look really ugly when the defenders are aggressive. That's a great job of getting downhill and making a, a really good arm wrapping tackle. Well, speaking of food, Georgia Southern defensive coordinator Brandon Bailey recommended Nats around here for anyone. I take his recommendations for anything because he certainly knows how to coach some defense. Grayson McCall throws to the sideline for his target, Jared Brown, who's already made five catches today, over 60 yards. Every week, there's a plan to get Jared Brown the ball. And I love the way how, how he toe-tapped right there. This, these guys are so well-schooled, so well-coached. Not just about getting big plays. It's the intricacies of the game that they excel at, and Brown is one of the better ones in America. Already the sixth third down attempt today. Man coverage. He looks at Brown's direction initially, then goes the opposite way. Pass out of bounds. <laughs> Intended for the running back, Braden Bennett, who slipped fourth down. Well, I'd like to see Braden turn and start to go up the field. He, he, he was running out of real estate. He kind of got lost on where he was in the field. If he turns up and turns this route into a real route, this is a swing route initially, but go ahead and turn into a real route, and, you're, and I promise you, Grayson McCall can make that throw up the sidelines on the move. Now another three and out for Coastal Carolina. That's the second straight. Caleb Hood back to return. Caleb Hood might have an opportunity. Now he's going to let that bounce, and it takes a Coastal Carolina roll. So field position is kind of swayed back and forth after an initial electric start. Davis Brin comes out here. 
Another series for him and this offense. Kyle Van Therese was the QB a season ago. You look at their first years at Georgia Southern. To this point in the season, they're almost identical in terms of yards thrown when you look at this year for Davis Brin, last year for Van Therese. Van Therese, by the way, threw 27 touchdown passes a year ago on the season. So Brin has more than that right now when you look at where they were a season ago at this stage. Two things jump out on that, on that deal. 73% completion percentage is amazing. And then those seven interceptions, well, six came in one game against Wisconsin. They almost had a signature win against Wisconsin. The wheels fell off. But like I said before, he's played amazing except for one half of football. Bryn rolls out, able to find Derwin Burgess, Riverdale, Georgia native. Fifth in the conference in yards entering today. And he catches 124 in that game in Madison, Wisconsin. So that time, Brian Ellis changes the launch point and gets his quarterback Brent on the move, and it's still all good. Give me a guy who's accurate from the pocket and on the move, and I can win with him. Bringing O.J. Arnold, the back who got the brunt of the carries a week ago, brought down by J.T. Killen there. He's their vocal leader talking about Killen, number 21. And both of these, these linebackers, Bruce and Killen, very aggressive. They play downhill. Same thing with Braylon Ryan. Very active linebacker core. Bryn sacks and dropped from behind. Lucky to hang on to the football there. Mason came around on the edge. Guy who led Wofford in tackles for a loss a season ago, transferred to Coastal Carolina this year. I like the edge rush. Six foot three, 280 pounds. Watch him get to an edge. Now I like to see him get that ball. He's trying. Oh, and it almost came out. That's, that's a great job right there by Davis Bren because that ball almost come out. Now watch the watch the tomahawk. Bam! That's how you play physical football on the wrap and bat. But Bren did a great job of keeping the ball in Georgia Southern's hands. They did lose some yardage, though. Third and 14 coming up. They have the receivers to convert this. Nice job defensively on the coverage. There, the Coastal Carolina DBs dropping back. Tobias Fletcher. Well, Queenley took a shot. And when you're playing this good zone coverage, you got two underneath and a safety over the top. And you're gonna make them pay for it like that. And that could have been, that could have been a flagging situation. That's Tobias Fletcher coming over and getting a hit. It's a little late. Could have been a personal foul. I'm okay with the no call, but that's cover two defense where you have an underneath trailing defender and a safety over the top trying to make a receiver play. Georgia Southern has a big game next week against James Madison. This Coastal Carolina team is Brown slipped and is gonna watch this one roll back. Lost to Georgia State last week. They're 0-1 in conference play. Georgia Southern's 1-0, 0-0 in conference play. So it's a big stage for both teams here in Statesboro. Tied up, Coastal Carolina and Georgia Southern. Early second quarter, what's turned into a defensive battle over the last few series. So last week, Coastal Carolina, three of their first four drives resulted in punts. Main thing right now, that first one this week resulted in a touchdown. Running game was really positive on that drive. Since then, Georgia Southern's D-line has had it snuffed out pretty well. McCall fakes the run, throws to the sideline, and has the catch. Sam Pinckney on the grab. Able to make it against Demel Hickman, the best cover corner for Georgia Southern. We talked about the length of these receivers. Tight man coverage. He doesn't need a lot of separation, Jason, because of his size. Six foot four, 220 pounds. I'm just telling you right now, NFL scouts are loving number 15. He began his college career in this state with Georgia State. McCall wants it all downfield. McCall. Did he hang on there is the question mark for Pinckney. They're going to say he, he did. So Pinckney right on cue uses all of that height to go up and make the grab at six foot four. 
Well, Randy Moss made a living of this. The 50-50 ball is, you see Coastal going, hurry up. And they sneak right into the end zone. A big shot, and then bolts are breaches the line, and gets Coastal Carolina right back on the board. That was quick. It was. And I love the fact that they went hurry up to get that touchdown, too. Catch the defense, sucking win. But look at the catch. One guy high-pointed that ball. That's ball skills. That's God-given talent, body control, and length. You can't coach length. Excellent job of hand-catching that football. They tack on the extra point. 42 yards on that catch for Pinckney. And it tees up the touchdown. Well, listen, you can go double coverage. He'll go get it. And inside, that's easy because the defense wasn't ready. They were looking at wounds. Touchdown, Santa Clears. Rewards. So the trio of all-conference receivers for Coastal Carolina has played well today. The two players that have made catches for Coastal Carolina, Jared Brown and Sam Pinkney, have combined for 144 yards. That was a, a big grab for Pinkney, who's back in the state where his college career began. Lost to his former team a week ago, Georgia State. Coastal Carolina looking for some much-needed redemption on the road today. Want more NFL action this season? NFL Plus brings you live games on mobile, NFL Red Zone, NFL Network, game replays, and more all in one place. Sign up today at plus.nfl.com. Terms and conditions apply. It's now to kind of restart this Georgia Southern offense that has stalled a bit over the last couple of drives. What needs to happen here? Well, I think it's time for them to take a shot. You need to get downfield with these athletic receivers and test this secondary that Sean DeClear is. See if they can stay with these guys. Remember, we talked about, you know, what Georgia Southern has is speed and quickness. Well, we got to use it now. You watched them drop 40 points a week ago at Ball State. Back at home this week, Brynn with not a lot of time. Some more disruption from the D-line of Coastal Carolina. That group has showed up to play today. Well, we talk, you talked about it, and that right there, that rush, because they were trying to go down the field. You saw about three nine routes, which is basically go routes, streaking down the field, bombs, whatever you want to call them. But the time wasn't there for Bryn to make an accurate throw. Emmanuel Johnson got a hand up. It's Polson Stadium crowd anxiously waiting and see if Georgia Southern maybe got a little anxious there as well. It's the freshman KD Dorsey who gets tagged there. True freshman from Augusta, Georgia. Penalties have hurt Georgia Southern's total yards today. Bryn pressured again, got that away, but couldn't complete it. His intended target, Joshua Thompson, one of their vertical threats. And in on the pressure, Clayton Isbell. Well, Isbell had great coverage. The back in coverage. Yeah, and they, they missed it, though. He, he grabbed the face mask of the receiver, and, and the officials didn't see it. And that was a bad penalty because it stopped the, the completion. That should be a first down for Georgia Southern. Just didn't see it. Bryn steps up again, another third and long here. Mm. Nearly had things break down enough downfield for Dalen Cobb to come open, and there is yet another flag. Back at the 15, you see what this is for. Well, so that, hang on a minute. That's holding, he got declined that penalty. I'm declining that and forcing the punt. Yet another punt coming up here for Georgia Southern. The pass rush is starting to come alive for the Santa Clares. They're getting after this offensive line. And this offensive line we talked about 
has been pretty amazing all year. Yeah, they threw the ball 50 times last week against Ball State and gave up one sack. That's amazing. Well, today, different story. Uh-oh. That one goes... So that's the part Alex of Smith kept it. <laughs> yes, Alex Smith kept it. So, so listen, Jason. Well, you don't see this very often. That's an Australian look. Let's take a look at this replay. He's trying to be an Australian cook kicker. Watch him looking and peeking to see if a defender shows up. He's going to be on the move to the, towards the top of the screen. He's looking. There's no defender. Well, can I? Can I? Yeah, I think I can. Go ahead and run the football, and that's all on him. That's his decision. That's what a rugby kicker gives you. He's going to be on the move once he catches the ball. He'll kick it if he needs to. He'll run it if it's there. Deceptive move from the freshman. And then they get tagged with the delay of game after that. But how about Alex Smith, who just kind of kept strolling and strolling, and no one ever picked him up? <laughs> right. You talking about a, a punter's dream? Green grass? First Australian football player in Georgia's southern history, and they used the Aussie tactics well there, trying to keep this offense going. Take another look at it here. There's some good coverage from Keontae Lusk breaks that up. So watch it. Yeah, he's on the move. Hey, there is no defender there. He, and I love the fact that he wanted to make sure he was sure. And he was sure he was sure. And he headed right for the sidelines just in case. That's how you do it, freshman. Can the Eagles take advantage of this, though? Three extra four downs. That's the question mark right now. They go underneath that time to Caleb Hood. Emerges off the turf after a game to make this kind of third and manageable here. They're moving quickly once again. So clear to me that when Davis Brent has time, he's going to carve you. If you don't rush him, he's going to find the open man and throw an accurate ball. Big third down here, trying to keep the chains moving. Haven't been able to do that over the last couple of series. Bren goes over the middle and has a completion. Able to connect. Now Bren's just showing off. Watch him climb the pocket. This is about feeling the pressure, stepping up into the void, delivering an accurate ball while taking the hit. Showing a little bit of everything, Jason. Anthony Queeley makes the reception. They go quickly again, wanting Dalen Cobb. Keontae Lusk in on the coverage, and this is caught. Caught over on the sideline right in front of the Georgia Southern student section. Five minutes to go in the half, and Georgia Southern has the momentum back now. Now, Brent goes back in his bag. A little shoulder shimmy to manipulate the defense. Back shoulder throw complete there. He's given us the entire repertoire. You better rush him. Well, it gets it out in 1.4 seconds. I mean, <laughs> that's the issue. <laughs> that's his average, and the Coastal Carolina staff was concerned about that. Gets it out quick again. Over the middle this time. Finds Caleb Hood. So much toughness that Hood brings to the table. Grew up with seven siblings. Atlanta, Georgia native. Now they go right back to him. Program's all-time leading receiver, who we got a chance to meet yesterday, creeps ahead for an Eagles first down. Well, but they had a, just a lot of assembly line of receivers coming to check in on Brian Ellis, their offensive coordinator. Just guys coming in to say hello, see what's going on. Well, you'd love to see that. That's when you got closeness with your receiver room, your athletes, with your coordinator. That's what it's all about. Inside of the final five minutes of this opening half now. Georgia Southern leading a drive that they're hoping to tie this game up. Back on the coverage is Abraham Timoni. There is that pass floated wide of the intended receiver, Caleb Hood. Well, Hood broke out, and his quarterback, Davis Brin, thought he was going to break in. Lucky that that was not an interception. 
you got to be on the same page with these little option routes where you got man coverage. You need two people seeing the exact same thing. That time, that did not happen. And they pulled the tricks out of the back to continue this drive on an Aussie-style fake fourth down fake punt. Now inside of the red zone here. Trying to tie the game. Oh, it was deflected and caught in the back of the end zone by Anthony Queeley. But Juan Powell is the sickest man in the stadium because he had two hands on that ball. Should have been an interception. A near interception slips through the fingertips into the hands of a touchdown. And Lance tacks on the game time extra point. the best decision by Brent and he's got a guy hooking up inside double coverage perfect both guys there to make an interception Juan makes a break on the ball puts both hands on the ball and doesn't squeeze it and Anthony Queenie says thank you very much I'll take six look at little skinny posts they're all over it either guy makes the interception but neither does you can feel the emotion and see it on Juan Powell's face, how much he wanted that one. And like you said, could have easily been a Clayton Isbell interception as well. Instead, it's a game-time touchdown. Well, listen, we, we talked about Davis Brent throwing six interceptions against Wisconsin. That's when you know you're living right football-wise. When he steal one right there, because that should not have been a touchdown. Davis Brent bounced back last week. Leads a bounce back drive that this sold-out crowd in Statesboro is enjoying. to return. And Simpkins taken down. He can feel the passion bleeding through now on this special teams unit. John Ferguson able to make the hit. One of the best parts of this conference is the experience of the quarterbacks that's playing out again today. And we talked about this was a premier quarterback matchup and neither guy has disappointed. We've got the one interception from Grayson McCall. Should have been an interception for Brent. Did not happen. McCall has been great as a dual threat guy, but that's who he is. Three-time defending offensive player of the year. We'll hear more big plays from him, guaranteed, as we move through this game. We know Grayson McCall isn't afraid of the big stage. He's been on it several times. Has never been below 500 record-wise through his first five games. Breaking out a long run there is Braden Bennett, his trusty back, the Greenville, South Carolina native, has a gain of 17. Big and fast, 6'2", 215 pounds, is a straight line runner. He's a track type guy. Love to get him the football with lanes. He can slash and go deep with the best of them. He has a catch in every game this season, too, just so dynamic. They go right back to him. He slashes it upfield. Oh, what a hurdle. There's a flag down where he hurdled. The helmet of Will McDonald. The offensive lineman came off. There's a gain of 13 as of now. And it's interesting because that flag was thrown towards him. So the question is, was it illegal hands to the face that made his helmet pop off? Jeremy Parker agrees with you there. Here's the run again. Well, the lids don't usually pop off by themselves. But watch the run. We talked about it. You give this guy a lane, he's going to exploit it. He's big, fast, really good athlete. Again, not the most nifty guy. He won't necessarily make the first guy miss. But if he's got a crack, he's going to exploit it.
Coastal Carolina is the defending division champ. They're not ready to give up that crown yet. McCall finds a soft spot in the Georgia Southern secondary and finds Sam Pinckney in that open space. I love the design. You bring everybody into a phone booth. You got twins, but they're tight. Tight receivers on both sides. And then you run a, a route combination that forces the defense to be disciplined with their eyes. If the ball comes out quickly, there's usually room in a window to throw the football. Nice job by Pinkney. 18 straight games with a catch for Pinkney. See some of the red zone numbers in terms of touchdowns. They're two for two today. Better than their season average. And that play is made out of bounds if it was hauled in. Wanted Kendall Carr there. Transfer from North Carolina. One of their big tight ends, but they'll have to reset the chains here. Well, the coverage by Stampley was exemplary. It's just a little bootleg. You fake the run, you start to establish a little bit of run, go ahead and fake it. Ball's got to come out quick, though. The pressure forced an errant throw, but Mark Stampley, the second, was where he needed to be. Coastal 128 to 8 the last time these teams met here in Statesboro. Different feeling, though, this year for both teams. The short run there. McCall in this offense here with two minutes to go. Third down coming up. Tie game. Third down has just been kind of the theme of the day for Coastal Carolina. They've lived with it, and Tim Beck's team has converted a few different times. They're trying to do it here on third and seven. Well, this is a big third down for this Eagle defense. You've got to force a field goal opportunity from here. You cannot allow a first down inside your own 10-yard line. About as loud as it's been all night. McCall incomplete. Wanted Tyson Mobley who had to climb the ladder. Dam Demel Hickman was on the coverage. And Davion Woods forced the high throw. You can't block them all, Jason. Sometimes that offensive line is going to squeeze down, let the end man go, and the quarterback's got to beat him. Watch the pressure from the right side of your screen. They're letting him go, and they're saying, Grayson McCall, you got to beat him and get the ball out accurately. Couldn't happen there. It's now Liam Gray from 34 to try to take the lead. He missed it. Georgia Southern stands up with their backs against the wall there. Now they have about 80 seconds to work with offensively. Well, Brandon Bailey, the defensive coordinator of Georgia Southern, has to be happy with that red zone defense. Defensively, you did your job. Not only did you not allow that first down on third down, you forced a field goal, and they missed it. So that's as good as it gets right now, giving your opportunity to your offense now to run this two-minute drill with a 119. You already know they move quickly, then they've got three timeouts. The Georgia Southern offense coming up here to work with. Yeah, that's the that's the advantage of that pace and space offense. They don't have to get out of their character. This is they can run their base stuff because they're already moving quickly anyway. Whoever cannot break and bend with the emotion, and Georgia Southern offense quite literally fits with that. Is what you're saying. They go quickly underneath. It's what they want to do. That pass incomplete, though. Clayton Isbell made a beautiful play in coverage. Well, I like Isbell. He's fun to watch. He's so competitive. Came from Utah. He played for the Utes last season. Took his talents to Myrtle Beach. 6-2, long arms. Set the game clock to 1-6-2. He's working towards a second degree in communication right now. We asked him what he wants to do. Said he wants to get into coaching. Yeah, for his belt. But he made it a point to say, "Hey, after I'm done football." Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> He's he has no plans to be done anytime soon. If he keep playing like that, he won't be. He's got the coach like mine, which is good to have in that secondary. They reset the clock to 116. Brin gonna test the secondary. And that pass incomplete had Queeley. Over on the sideline, Keontae Lusk on the coverage. Back shoulder. Let's see if he gets that toe tap. And not quite. Nope, he's out of bounds. Henry Ella, the great wide receiver.
receiver from the Rams and wide receiver coaches always say, when you're along that sidelines, let your legs go dead. Don't try to tap it. Go dead. Let them fall straight underneath you. That would have helped right there to get that completion. Now, Georgia Southern's got to be careful. You know, that whole lot of time is run up this clock. If they get another incomplete pass, they set up the shot of clears to get the ball back. That's very true. Davis Brin on third and ten. Same matchup. And this time, it's more clean coverage from Keontae Lusk. Fans are waiting for a flag. They're not going to get one. Clearly the intended target. But Coastal Carolina stands tall. If that's a flag, I don't know how you play defensive football at the cornerback position. I mean, both guys are entitled to the position. Both guys are hand fighting. Great no call. And I'm not even sure that ball was catchable anyway. I don't think Alex Smith tries it again. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, listen, if you put him on the move and no one shows up, he'll keep running. I don't think that was not a called fake. He did that on his own because no defender showed up. This time he does boot it away. Jared Brown will fair catch this. So no time off that clock. 59 seconds to go in the second quarter. Three timeouts for Coastal Carolina. Coastal receivers really been the, the duo of Jared Brown and Sam Pinkney, the primary target. They tried to get Tyson Mobley involved last time. We'll see what they can do here. You think you need some sort of large jump through the air at some point. A lot of production out of those two guys. And again, at some point, I'd, I'd like to see Mobley get involved because you just defensively, you got three guys, and three guys to cover is really hard to do. Now, they have a problem coming to those two, but still, Mobley's a, a really good player in his own right. But none of that matters if they don't block this front. McCall swings it out to his back. It's Bennett who can run at, like a running back. He catches like a receiver, runs like a back. It's a dynamic combination of skill sets. Yeah, I like him. He, he has versatility. He does a little bit of everything. That's an NFL type back right there. And he'll run well when he runs that 40. The only thing, the only chink in his armor, the one little weakness in his game is he doesn't necessarily make the first guy miss. They swing him out again. Deception for McCall to keep it. Cuts it back, McCall. Marked down with a slide begin. I love that call, Jason. Because you know you're getting man coverage. You displace the box by running in and out. Now you're one short in the box and you run the quarterback draw. And usually that means it's going to be a one-on-one -on -one situation. And that linebacker can't wait. He has to go fill a hole. And we got a nifty quarterback like McCall. He's going to pick the gap that's open. That was the first time out taken by Coastal Carolina. So some news and notes around the country here. Georgia able to survive Auburn. Kentucky takes down the ranked Florida team. Well, Pretty it's convincing. A, it's official now. Kentucky owns Florida. I mean, yeah. we might as well just say that now. Yeah. And then you look at Texas and Kansas there. We got some people, at least one guy down in the truck, who might be shedding some tears. Yeah, yeah. Kansas had the undefeated start, no longer unbeaten, but Rock Shock Jayhawks. start for the Jayhawks. And then let's take a look at this conference, though. Right, it, It's a big night. Coastal Carolina and Troy are both trying to avoid 0-2 conference starts. Troy's on the road right now at Georgia State. So your two teams that played in the conference championship a season ago have their backs against the wall trying to avoid 0-2 starts on the road. Grayson McCall doesn't want that to happen. Goes high! Was that intercepted inbounds? They're going to say it was. Georgia Southern football, Cam Williams, second pick of the opening half for the Eagles. Oh, my goodness, Cam Williams. So this is cover two, and this ball's got to get fit in to a tight window. Oh. What a game. What an opening half it's been. And what a pick. I mean, that ball had incompletion written all over it until Cam Williams decided he was going to flip the script. Look at that ball going out of bounds. No, no, that's mine. That's my ball. I want greedy defensive backs. I want defensive backs with hands, right? What a crazy notion that defensive backs can have hands. Cam Williams showed that he's got hands. Cam Williams, rare California native on this 
roster transfer from Washington. Had a relationship with Clay Helton before making the transfer. Move here, and he has fit in so well. a big play the second pick of the opening half for Georgia Southern 39 seconds three timeouts here for Davis Britt goes to work and has a completion on his first throw at finding Dalen Cobb over there if you just to clear is you want to keep the ball in front of you and don't let anything behind you if you're a safety be as deep as the deepest wide as the widest let the ball get caught in front of you if it's going to be a quarter at all and you need to heat this rush up Got out of bounds there. Clock starts moving again. Oh, up the middle. It's Jalen White back this week. And that's the reason why they're happy he's back. What a call. And what a hole to run through. Gain of 37. They use one of the timeouts. Did you expect them to run it there? No. Are you kidding me? That's great execution. They ran a full block, and P. Sean Wembley came around and blocked the only defender. The only defender left in the box. Twenty-eight seconds left in an opening half that's been filled with drama and back and forth. Georgia Southern. It's been really impressive them playing in front of this crowd. There's the guy who reminds you of Jarek McKinnon, the Kansas City Chiefs back for and Jalen White. Yeah, why? Because he can do it all. He does everything well. He's a really good runner. He's a terrific receiver, and he's an elite pass protector. That's what McKinnon does. He can. He's a every down back, a three down back, because he excels at every part of the game. White's the exact same way. A Georgia, Georgia Southern alum as well. He wants Cobb here one-on-one. -on -one. Flag goes flying. Juan Powell was on the coverage. We'll see if this is defensive pass interference. It is on Coastal Carolina's best DB. Wow, that's interesting. That's a tough call, I think. So let's look at this coverage. Seven round on the outside. Ball's thrown up. There's some contact. I see it. I mean, you know, he's got his head turned around. He's looking for the ball. That, to me, that's a no call. There, the law, he put his hands on the receiver when the ball's in the air. That is illegal contact. But, man, that is really, really tough call in my opinion. Oh, quick throw through traffic. Kind of dangerous intended for Derwin Burgess there. Clayton Isbell was in the vicinity with 19 seconds left to go now. And the two timeouts still left here for Georgia Southern. You're in field goal range to potentially at the bare minimum take a lead. 19 seconds left. You start to think about how many plays you have before you get that field goal unit out there. And Bryn's got to be thinking, I don't have to be too aggressive with this ball. He's patient. Has Burgess inbounds. First down. Clock stops with the first down in the final two minutes of each half. They take the timeout. 13 seconds left after the game of 12. It's a comeback route, Jason. Watch him drive. Drive. Drive the defender. Stop and come back to the ball. The ball's thrown outside where he can make the catch. He digs it out. Doesn't get any better than that. Burgess is one of these receivers from Georgia Southern that we met yesterday. They all have their own shares yeah. in the offensive coordinator's room, and that's because they watch so much film together. They said, you guys just put some chairs in here because you're always in here anyway. That's right. And they kick them out. They kept coming into our meeting. <laughs> and when we're talking about it, those chairs are bolted down. So what that does is now that sets the bar for all the young receivers coming and say, hey, those are three chairs there for extra film watching, right? The best that we've had in this program watched extra film. you got to do the same thing if you want to be successful. Let's see what offensive coordinator Brian Ellis' red zone offense can do here. 13 seconds left. They throw it quickly anyway. 
Green had to be patient. Open receiver in the end zone. Georgia Southern touchdown. Caleb Hood. Great job by Hood of sitting down in that zone. You don't want to run through zones. You're going to sit down in the void and understanding that your quarterback, Brent, is going to find you and throw an accurate ball. So Georgia Southern takes the lead. With eight seconds to go in a very eventful final couple of minutes of his opening half. So Coastal decides to go zone and try to fill up all the throwing lanes. But when you have a savvy route runner like Hood, he can find the void. And if you got a quarterback who understands where all the routes are, he's going to find the open man and throw the ball before the rush gets there. And that's easy for me to say, but it's tough to do, especially if you got a quarterback who's not quite sure of himself. But that rush was stymied. He had time. He's going to look around. We said if you don't rush Bryn, he's going to find the open man and hit him. It felt like a few times this half was on the verge of maybe ending that East Steve said, no, 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 it's not ended yet. And it's Georgia Southern who does the best job of putting their exclamation point on it. Still eight seconds left. You never know. Javon Simpkins going back to return after Caleb Hood hauls in the touchdown pass. He's another one of those guys that has his own chair in the offensive coordinator's room to go in and watch film every night. Lidnikoff watch list, preseason first team all Sunday. We've got a lot of great receivers on this field tonight. This conference has just been stacked with good wideouts over the last couple of years. Oh, so that man clipped off of Simpkins, you're right. So Coastal Carolina had to get that out of the end zone. Did they avoid disaster? I think they did. I think they barely got it out. Maybe by inches. Oh, my goodness. Wow. Essentially, Jason, that was the world's longest kick, one-side kick. I mean, they're trying to squib it to avoid the, the kick return, which they did. But if you don't field the ball, that becomes an onside kick. Now, had he not touched it in the end zone, been automatic touchback but he touched the ball and that's a live ball he's got to do everything he can to get out and man he barely gets out it was Baltazar he took almost an odd hop on him like he was playing yeah. shortstop and that's right took Great a point yeah and you don't usually see that on turf fields usually right. all bounces are true but hey that oblong ball that's a football can be weird Going to review that. Again, the call in the field was that runner was down to the two yard line. So, again, it skipped off Baltazar, has to track back here at Tioga. So, as long as his ball gets out, Jason, his body can be in the end zone, but the, the ball, ball has, has to, to get fully out. cross the goal line. And that is close. If it is even partially touching, it has to fully be across the goal line and, and it looks to me upon contact it has not gotten out but I think his momentum brings the ball out before he hits the ground it's interesting to see where the ball is because of how his back is turned there yeah our angles aren't the best on this and you've got an official right down that goal line hopefully they can get a really good look ball needs to be fully across the goal line <laughs> they all know on the field is that it was yeah. and the official appears to have a pretty good peek at the football and like you said, the call in the field is that it got out. So How these looks have to be conclusive. Now his knee touched down inside the goal. The, was the ball out when the knee went down? Was it fully out when the knee went down? Yeah, see, I, I'm, not, I'm not sure there's enough there to say it's definitive that the call in the field was incorrect. And that's really the key. It, it won't shock me if he takes a while on this one because not for multiple reasons one it's a, it's a tough angle to see but two it's a very important play 
They spotted it at the, they said two. We're, we're seeing one. It's very close. We'll find out the verdicts here. The ruling of the runner down at the one yard line stands. First down. So it does stand big for Coastal Carolina and Tim Beck just trying to get out of this half now. Can he get out of the final eight <laughs> seconds? Is what we were wondering. We said anything could happen, yeah. and something big nearly <laughs> happened. He spoke into existence. But again, the, the verbiage, the call the field stands. That means everything he looked at didn't give him a definitive one way or the other. And so by rule, you have to allow the call in the field to take precedent. Quarterback sneak. Just get some breathing room and get out of the opening half. That's Coastal Carolina's goal there. <laughs> Take a breath. You'll need more of them in the second half. What an opening two quarters of play in Statesboro. With big conference implications on the line in this division. Georgia Southern wants to take the crown from Coastal. They're up seven at the half. Trying to get to 1-0 oh in conference play. Coastal Carolina trying to avoid uncharted waters of a potential 0-2 oh start in conference play. The big names are out, and they're making big plays. Saturday night, college football on NFL Network. Welcome back to Statesboro, Georgia. Georgia Southern up seven after a fun back and forth ending to the opening half that saw the Eagles take a late lead on a Caleb Hood touchdown. Two teams in the same division battling out. An important matchup tonight. Take a peek at the QBs. Well, they're shooting for the moon behind these graphics tonight. And Grayson McCall's two interceptions, very uncharacteristic. Only had a couple of picks all of last season. That would go. Yeah, I mean, he's got two tonight, four for the season. The last two years combined, he's only been five. So this is not the Grayson McCall we've seen be the player of the year in the conference. The good news is he's got another half to get right. Welcome you back inside. Tyoka Jackson, Jason Ross Jr., our outstanding NFL Network crew on hand here in Statesboro. I mean, this is about as good as it gets. Sold out atmosphere, big conference matchup, night game. The crowd has been hyped up. What more could you ask for? Right. I mean, it's about being out of momentum. I mean, the momentum has shifted back and forth early on. But to close the half and to get the ball back to start the second half, if you're Georgia Southern, that's how you seize control of a game. It's going to be very important. Right, that the, the Santa Clears come out defensively and reestablish themselves because it can begin to snowball with this momentum if Georgia Southern goes down to score it again. Talk about the middle eight of a football game. Georgia Southern kind of owned the final, what turned out to be four minutes of that opening half. Now the second half, as Toka mentioned, they get the ball back to begin it up seven with their first lead of the game. Talk about the receivers for Georgia Southern today. We mentioned they have a plethora of options. These two have really stood out, though. Caleb Hood and Derrick Burgess. Well, we talked about them in the open, and we did for a reason, because we know they are going to feed the football to these two men. And we, we talked about Derrick Burgess just being an all-purpose type guy. He can do a little bit of everything. He's shown up big with the receptions, but Caleb Hood's an NFL player. We talked about that. We saw his length. We talked about that. Six foot four, 200 pounds. He can be covered, but not really covered because his catch radius is so big. Second half is about to get underway. Georgia Southern, as we mentioned, will begin this half with the ball after scoring to finish out the opening half of action and nearly forcing a safety as well. I cannot impress upon you how important this opening drive is for both teams. Georgia Southern is just trying to take a stranglehold of this game, and the shot to clears is trying to keep it within reach. The momentum is back and forth. I mean, look, momentum is fleeting. But execution is forever. You've heard me say that forever. Well, let's see who executes coming out of the half. Georgia Southern at 3-1, and one, looking to get off to a 1-0 start in conference play. And their second-year head coach, Clay Helton, to take a one-on-one -on -one shot. Coverage from Matthew McDoom intended that time for Derwin Burgess, who we just talked about. Nice coverage from McDoom. Why not? Take your shot. And I like it. But the coverage was where it needed to be. 
That's just marvelous coverage. And see, that there should not be a flag there because both guys are hand fighting. So you just let them play football. And so that's a really good job of man coverage on the outside by number 18 or number 16, Matthew McDoom. And it looked like he kept it, turned his head to the football as well. That helps. He's also one of their faster corners. Brin's going back to the air. Brin over the middle. That one off the hands once again of Burgess. On the coverage again is McDoom. One of the few times that we've seen Brin not be rushed and be off target. He had a crossing route, a dig route going across the field. He had the man open, but just doing an inaccurate ball. We haven't said that a lot tonight. On the other side, Grayson McCall, two interceptions, something you haven't said about him really at all throughout his career. This is the second time that's happened. And that's the difference in the game right now. Davis Brin to the sticks. Unable to secure the football that time is Dalen Cobb. We know he'll be kicking himself after that with some nice coverage from Juan Powell. Now, Georgia Southern is now three of nine on third down. So both of these defenses has played well on third down. And that's a big part of this game. And as you mentioned, it's the turnovers. That's the difference. Because pretty much from a statistical standpoint, it's either been tipped a little bit towards the Shanta Clears or dead even. And the Shanta Clears have outgained them, outrushed them. But they're down because they're down 0-2 in the turnovers. Jared Brown back to return. The Alex Smith punt makes the fair catch. Sets up really good field position for Coastal Carolina's offense. Well, Brown and Pinckney, the two wideouts for Coastal Carolina that have made up a lot of the offense today, going to trot back out there. See what Grayson McCall and company can do. Again, scored on their opening drive. The other scoring drive stemmed off a really deep shot to Pinkney. You see, he has the 96 yards and four receptions, and the average really coming from that super long 42-yard shot they connected on in the opening half. Yeah, his maturity, he's been there, he's done that. He never gets rattled. He's a husband. He's, he's a father. He's married his high school sweetheart. This guy has it going on on the field and off. They run it here. Making the tackle on Bennett. That time was Marquez Watson Trent. And now maybe some tempo here from Coastal. to the ground and we know Clay Helton and Georgia Southern have so much respect for what Grayson McCall can do. That's one of the common themes in our meetings. They respect this offense so much. It's an offense implementing a new system with a new offensive coordinator defensively, new defensive coordinator this year. Of course, new head coach Tim Beck. Not an easy thing to do, but they have the experience to do it. And at their best, we know it can look really smooth. Time offensive player of the year in the conference who went into the portal and they recruited him out of the portal because we said we're going to turn you into an NFL prospect by allowing you to play a pro style offense. Back up the middle with Bennett, just so patient that wide receiver build an explosive bend. Kind of the choppy steps got him enough for a first down there. Well, I think he heard me talking about not having the ability to make the first guy miss. Well, he made a miss that time. And he showed a little wiggle, a little two-foot jump cut, back to the middle, back to the inside, and got extra yards. His dad, Brandon, played for South Carolina along with the Cincinnati Bengals and Carolina Panthers. McCall faked it to Brown, eluded the pressure, just good to get that away with the only target being Kendall Carr in the vicinity. We'll talk about Grayson McCall, how he entered the portal but opted to stay. Well, his head coach, Tim Beck, has coached some pretty good quarterbacks in the past during his stops at Texas, stops at Ohio State, and then his stops at Kansas. This is just some of the names on that list. Joe Burrow also was one of the names that, when he was at Ohio State, but didn't really play there, of course, transferred to LSU. And Grayson McCall is stepping into a pro-level system. Yeah, and the, and the selling point was, yeah, you've been great as we watch this play here outside zone eaten up completely by multiple Georgia Southern defenders. Latrell Bullard. 
physical on the interior. 6'1", 341, bursting up the center there. Well, you better be physical if you're 340 pounds. And so if you get single block, you better get in the backfield. And that's what happened there. But to finish the point about Grayson McCall, they said we can take you from being an all-star defensive player, uh, offensive player of the year in a conference type guy to an NFL prospect by putting more on your plate. Now he's learning to go through route trees, progressions. He's setting the... He's setting the uh, the offensive line to pick up blisses. That's NFL type quarterback stuff. Third and 13. They have to run it with Bennett. Oh, he <laughs> tried to hurdle and was met by Myers. <laughs> well, when you want to hurdle, you want to make sure there's a hurdle there. <laughs> they got enough for a first down. Whatever you want to call it, it's enough. Great blocking up front. This is the second level without being touched, but he's hurdling nothing. If you hurdle air, you're going to get met in the air with a hit. Nice job of ball security, though. Gain of 13. Coastal's D got the stop. Now their offense is backing it up. Drop it off to Bennett again. Another first down for Bennett. And Bennett's inside of the 15. Yeah, I'm convinced Bennett heard me. Because again, he makes the first guy miss. And this time it's Mark Stampley. But how about Grayson McCall getting back, feeling the pressure, and hitting the check down? So often, quarterbacks ignore the check down. Take advantage of that free play. Last one was a gain of 13. That was a gain of 18. And this is a touchdown. Coastal Carolina with a huge response. Sam Pinckney catches the touchdown. When you get the run game going, the RPO becomes very effective. Look at the reaction from the linebackers. They're up in the line of scrimmage. That is as big a throwing window as you're ever going to see. Nice job of play action, pulling that ball out. And that that's easy. That's just like stealing. Third time today that we've been tied. Well, look, partner, you called this a heavyweight battle. Georgia Southern has hit on big punches. Well, the Shanta Clears come back and hit with a haymaker of their own. Toy Story Fun Day Football, Sunday at 9.30 a.m. on ESPN+. Plus. And the Toy Story version of the game as well. I saw um, and some of the players were asking, like, Who, who's playing me in the game, in the Toy Story game? It's, you're yourself. You're just uh, an animated character. I want... <laughs> I want <laughs> that was nice. I want Buzz Lightyear playing me, bro. That Nobody could be good. Yes. Some light opened up Goodness. at the end of the tunnel there, but then it closed quickly. Physical, physical game out there tonight. Could you be Buzz Lightyear? Yeah. Why not? To infinity and beyond. Mm, I love that saying. You know, <laughs> I don't even know what it means. It just it's cool though. To infinity and beyond. Yeah, I think it's talking about space. Space is infinity or infinite. Or Georgia Southern feels there's infinite possibilities for their season this year. Three and one start, trying to get off to a one and zero in conference play. Went six and seven a year ago. This team that was picked to finish fifth in their division certainly looks like a team that's better than fifth in their division to begin the year. They cut it up the middle. Nice hole here, O.J. Arnold. And they gave it to Jalen White. Scratch that. And he gets out across the 40. How about the burst from White? Man, he goes from 0 to 100 real quick. Huge hole, but man, you got to exploit it with some quickness, and he did. Sets up the passing game. Able to connect with Anthony Queeley. He muscles his way, carrying tacklers across the 50 for a first down. I don't like guys that dance. I like guys that see holes and exploit them. And it was a little counter action where they block down on the front side, pull back side. Guys kicking out, balls goes up inside, nobody home. Got physical underneath the pile there. Jalen White up to 48 yards rushing on the day now. And it's interesting to watch how this running game for Georgia Southern can set up the passing game as long as they stay ahead of the chains. You have got to find a way to make this team one-dimensional if you want any chance of stopping. If they can run the football effectively, they don't have to run it a lot, but be efficient with it. 
in terms of average per carry, they are so tough to defend. Hand it off again. More patient cutting from Jalen White. Yeah, they didn't have him last week. Ran for 914 yards last season. And there were question marks of whether he would enter the portal. And he just simply said, if they didn't want me when I was in high school, why would I leave now? I love it. I mean, that's, that's the type of loyalty you want to see from your players. And that means that you're treating them right. Especially in the era of NIL, where cash is getting thrown around and there are almost no rules. From the small town of Delville, Alabama, he heads out for a breather. They bring Arnold in. Arnold had a big game last week. Nine carries for 90 yards. You were there for that one? Yep. This offensive line we talked about has played so well, especially pass blocking. But, you know, look, when you average 530 yards of total offense, or at least you get 530 total yards of offense last week, the offensive line has to be hung from the small Brooks County, Southern Georgia County. Here's Davis Brin. Another connection. They're able to find Derwin Burgess. Complimentary football. Make all the initial plays look the same. RPO pulling a backside guard to make it look like run. That frees up the underneath routes because these linebackers have to come up and play the run. So hard to judge if you're a defense. They go back to Arnold. And he falls back down. And to that point, what's the key adjustment for Coastal Carolina? Well, first of all, your defensive line has to take care of the run. You've got to get penetration and shut the running game down. Right now, the offensive line is taking over the ball game. They're getting chunk plays. Lusk was on the coverage there, diving for the pass. Great effort, though. And it looks like he got a little handsy to me. I, I saw a little bit of a grab, no flag, but man, to make the effort to go after that ball, he almost came up with it. Very athletic move by the 5'11", 195 pound senior. It definitely felt like the corners for Coastal Carolina were up to the task today. Here's another big third down conversion. Both offenses have been futile today. And defensively, both teams are on the screws. Let's see what happens here on a very important third down. They bring Hood in motion. They like to go to the players that they bring in motion. They did there. It was well read by Clayton Isbell, and there are flags down in the backfield. That was well snuffed out by the Coastal defense. It's very interesting if, you get, if this is a holding call or maybe some of There it is. Yep. But you mentioned it, Isbell. Man, yeah. I mean, that, that's good on good. That's Caleb Hood against Isbell. That's, and we've seen Isabel matched up with multiple guys tonight. Got to be careful when he's around. He's a ball hawk. Remember, he nearly had an interception. It was one of our game-swinging plays, as you see the call there on Georgia Southern against them when the ball went through the hands of Isabel in the end zone mm -hmm. and Juan Powell as well. Yeah. And instead turned into a Georgia Southern touchdown for Clay Helton and his team that are going to be set back here in the red zone trying to retake the lead in this tie game. The turnovers have been so important to this shot to clear team. They tied for 14th in the nation with nine turnovers created and they averaged over nine points a game off turnovers. Haven't been able to get any so far tonight. Bryn faked one way looking for the end zone. Wanted Queely for the second time today in the end zone. They couldn't connect. Well designed. That's one of those almost. Looks like Tobias Fletcher back on the coverage. Yeah, Fletcher came off the hash as a safety and made a play late in this game uh, on this play. Let me see. See if he got there a little early. No, he didn't, and that should have been caught. I mean, that ball went right through the hands of Queely. He's got to catch the football. There's no question about it. That's an excellent throw by Bryn. He dropped it in the bucket. The bucket is your hands. You got to make the play. So now you're looking at a 45-yard field goal for Michael Lance, who went 4-4 last week. They said they wanted to not have as many attempts this week. This one splits the uprights right down Broadway. And Georgia Southern is back on top. 
Thanks to the Peachtree, Peachtree City, Georgia native Michael Lance. Three point Georgia Southern lead. They have a lead back. 7 10 to go in the third quarter. Wanted to get back to the basics going into this game. Wanted to get back to fixing the things that need fixing. Well, they did that. Coastal Carolina did to begin this opening half by scoring. Can they do it on their second drive of the second half? Javen Simpkins cut down. Mm. Nice tackle made there by Jeffrey Smith. Grayson McCall, he was a key reason why they were able to get back to the basics in terms of offense to begin the second half, went right down the field and scored when they got the football. What does this graphic mean to you? Well, listen, analytics is all the rage in football right now because they give you tendencies. Well, Grayson McCall is an analytic buster because he can see the entire field and has the arm to get the ball wherever he needs to exploit what he sees. So he'll throw it down the middle, outside the hash on the right, outside of the hash on the left. He's a balanced quarterback. That pass was deflected and intercepted for the third time today. And this is going to be a pick six. Kendry Jackson took it to the house. Georgia Southern defense today. Three interceptions, and they've all led to points. And it's the first career three interception game for Grayson McCall. Weston Wallace, 6'4, 345. Got his big hand on that football. To the Kadri Jackson pick six. Well, he doesn't have the hugest vertical, but you don't need to. When you're six foot four, 340 plus, watch him get the hands up on a three step drop. Get him up. That's what they teach you, Jason. When you can't get to the quarterback, get your hands up, make a play for your friend, score a touchdown, why don't you? He was almost at the tail end of the jump while he was landing. He <laughs> hung in the air for two more seconds. Well, like Space know. Jam or something. I don't know about that. Hey, I mean, look, man. some extra magic. Yeah, he's hung right. up there. Well, he probably can't get over a phone, phone book when he jumps. But it doesn't matter when you got long arms. And they're big arms, too. I'm just trying to give him all the credit hey, that he deserves. Listen, bro. I, you know I love D-line play. And I love guys who get to the quarterback. But if you don't, help your defense out by getting your hands in the throwing lane. Well, Georgia Southern seizes more turnover momentum. Coastal Carolina, as you mentioned when we were talking during the break, they're saying if we just don't turn the football over, we could maybe be leading in this game. Instead, they're down 10. Back to the ground with Braden Bennett. P.J. Smith on the tackle there for Georgia Southern. And if you're Coastal, it's time to not hit the panic button, even though broad picture season-wise, you're staring down the barrel of a potential 0-2 start in conference play. That doesn't really happen at Coastal Carolina. Yeah, absolutely right. It's still 6 minutes and 30 seconds left in the third. Travis Trickett understands if we don't give the ball away, we're going to move the football, and I love how Braden Bennett is stepping up for his quarterback. The D-line for Georgia Southern steps up. Against the run game there, M.J. Stroud off the edge. Redshirted last season. He's got so much speed. Ran track in high school. They feel their edge players have maybe as much athleticism as anyone on the team. Yeah, he's one of those guys that played tight end in high school. He's a little undersized. But if you put him on an edge, it's six foot three with that length and 225 pounds and burst. He can get in the backfield and make plays. 26,483 people roaring over this third down. That pass is out of the reach of Jared Brown. 
back on the coverage that time was Mark Stampley, who you were supremely impressed with a week ago. This brings up fourth down. Well, it's his versatility. He can do a lot of different things, and he's a playmaker. But I'm really surprised that Brown didn't come up with that football. That was a well-thrown ball by McCall. It looked like a track meet. Yeah, and, and, he, and he separated at the end of that thing, but I think he lost sort of sight of the football. Got to be able to track that ball in the air under the lights. I get it. Nighttime. Got to find it, though. Caleb Hood back to return this punt. High hang time. For YouTube TV is the new home of NFL Sunday Ticket. Being an NFL fan has never been easier. Watch every game every Sunday exclusively. With NFL Sunday Ticket on YouTube TV, sign up now and get $50 off. Terms and conditions apply. For more information, visit NFLSundayTicket.com. By the way, with YouTube TV as well, you can watch on your phone, your laptop. It's portable NFL all Sunday long. There's no better deal out there. No question about it. I want all football all the time so give me as many avenues to get there as possible and youtube is just the latest you can record your favorite team each week meanwhile davis brin takes back over 60-year guy out of tulsa transferred this season finds his running back it's oj arnold brought down there by pinkney Davis Brent felt that last season at Tulsa, it was by far the most dedicated he was in the film room. And he's carried that over to this season with his new team, new uniform. Hasn't missed a beat already in the double digits in terms of touchdown thrown on the season. He's going to run here. Oh, an elusive move. Said, I'm not sliding. I'm going to try to dodge you and pick up this first down. Well, we saw Coastal Carolina do that where they displaced the back, which leaves a light, a, a light box, and then you run your quarterback. Well, it's the same here with Davis Brent. They're not going to get, you know, you know, you're not going to mix him up with McCall in terms of what type of runner he is. But if you give him free grass, he's going to take it. It sets up a third and short. But that's what that pace we talked about, pace and space. When you space out the defense like that, it's going to be natural running lanes for either the running back or the quarterback. Coastal Carolina maybe get off the field quickly here. Bryn says no. They're going to keep this drive going on a nice connection there. They're able to hook up with Dalen Cobb. That's good coverage by Tobias Fletcher, but when it's third and short, it's hard to defend. Flag one flag. Were they moving a little too quickly yeah. there? They got ahead of the ahead of themselves that time. They got Miller. Clay Helton's upset about that. It's the unforced errors. That there's no excuse for pre-stop penalties, unforced errors like that. You're at home. The crowd's out of it in terms of noise. You know, you had a defense reeling right there. Instead, you're you're backing up five yards and getting yourself off schedule. They rarely get sacked because they move so fast. It was almost like they just sacked themselves. <laughs> yes. That's the only way they can get sacked. Do 50 passes last week. Just one sack. Meanwhile, another quick throw and another Anthony Queely connection. So tough when you're playing off coverage, which you have to do with the speed on this field. You got to back up your DBs and these slants. If you don't get hands up in the throwing lane defensively from your D-line, these slants become so easy. Queely entered the portal in November, coming over from Syracuse, enrolled at Georgia Southern in January. Biggest game he's played here so far. Run up the middle to set up third and manageable for this Georgia Southern offense. They converted last time. Go to O.J. Arnold there. These defenses, both sides, have been great on third down. But the last two, this one and the one before, has been really hard to stop if you're Coastal Carolina because it's been so third and short. Now, this is third and manageable, so you got a chance here. Can you get a rush without bringing people and play really good zone defense behind them? Coastal showing blitz off the edge. And here they come. That's Cobb. They brought in motion. A ton of soft spot over the middle. Big roll ahead. Caleb Hood down to the 10. And this is what happens when your offensive line is so great 
a pass block and you force the defensive coordinator to try to trick you to come up with pressure on the quarterback. And sometimes when you dial up these pressures, they're not sound enough to cover everybody up in the back half. If the ball comes out, there's a big play to be made. You can't rush everybody and cover everybody. If you rush that many guys, you better get there. Caleb Hood reaches the century mark. Sixth career 100-yard game. Second of the season. Fake it to Arnold. Go the other way, set up a screen here for... Out on the edge, Darren Burgess, brought down by Braylon Ryan. To piggyback the point, though, Jason, when your offensive line is really humming and, and pass blocking it in a lights out sort of way, it really puts a lot of pressure on your defensive coordinator. You know, you've got to find a way to get off the field on third down. If you're not getting here with four men, you're going to bring people. And if your quarterback is cool like Bryn, he's going to find the open guy under pressure. They'll fake it. Bryn Rose dumped it underneath there to Ethan Durham. That inside of the five to keep things moving here. Bring up third and goal. Long grinded out. Third down conversion filled drive. Knocking on the door of a potential three score lead. If you're Deshaun's defensively you got to make a stand here. Don't let this thing get out of hand. Now, obviously, if you're Georgia Southern, you've got four down territory. You can run it or throw it here. They'll hand it off. Did they get enough for the end zone? They did. Three-score game. Georgia Southern extending this lead. Jalen White, the big boys up front have been waiting for you. And they're executing a high cut for you as well. Extra point coming up. Michael Lance makes it 38 to 21. What a third quarter for Georgia Southern. When your offensive line is controlling the action, whatever you call is the right call. Seventeen point Georgia Southern lead. Tayoka, they were just playing Phil Collins in the air tonight. I can feel it in the air tonight. You can really feel it here. New attendance record, 26,483. And these players on the sideline are feeling the energy. Jalen White in particular is feeling it. Well, his big boys up front are allowing him to feel it. Seven rushes for 61 yards, 8.7 a carry. Again, they don't need to run a lot. As long as they're efficient like that, they're almost impossible to stop offensively. Snap for Coastal Carolina. Absolutely crucial possession that'll likely bleed over into the fourth quarter here. If you want to stay in this football game, you got to score right now. No question. And I don't think the score has to be a touchdown. Certainly, you can, that's what you want. But even a field goal will cut it to a two-score game. I don't think you can really make this beyond a three-score game into the fourth quarter and expect to come back on the road. You have got to put points on the board in this drive. First things first, though, take care of the football. You look at Coastal in recent years, 9-4 last year, 11-2 the year before that, 11-1 the year before that. Lost in the conference title game last season, and they're staring down at an 0-2 conference hole here if they can't pull off this 17-point comeback. I'd like to see Coastal, Jason, pick up the tempo a little bit. See them begin to put a little pressure on this Eagle defense. Their drives have been longer this year. They've been good in time of possession, but they almost said maybe we can crank it up a little bit. And yeah. now is the time, if you're going to do that, to do it. Uh, the clock is not quite an enemy, but it will quickly become one. They did have a really long chunk earlier in the game of 42 yards. And this one is Jared Brown creating a chunk of his own. Put your best players in space. That's what they want to do with Jared Brown. Yeah, and that's, that's that tunnel screen. And all you need is one block on the perimeter 
and Brown knows what to do with it. Watch him get upfield and run away from the defense. That's an athlete right there. Gain of 20. Turns out to be the final play of the third quarter. A third quarter owned by Georgia Southern. Can Coastal Carolina turn the tide when we return? Families affected by... 25,735. On September 17, 2016, the all-time attendance record was set at Paulson Stadium. It's time to break that record. They call it the prettiest little stadium in America. It's the best kept secret, perhaps. Not a secret anymore. Program record 26,483 in attendance, and they have made their presence absolutely felt in every second of this game. Gary bodies ahead here. His Baltazar emerges up. These <laughs> Georgia Southern players are getting hyped up when they all <laughs> everyone had their phones out. The lights were flashing. The momentum, it comes from this crowd. It's real. But, but you know, give them credit, the Eagles, because I mean, you can waste this atmosphere. Right. They've given the crowd something to feed off, and they're feeding. It's a feeding frenzy. They're all standing up, too. Statesboro, Georgia. First time NFL Network has visited this wonderful college football town. Grayson McCall, one at Jared Brown. Coverage from T.J. Smith. No dice. Yeah, he was on an island. And that's how you cover man-to-man -man because Georgia Southern brought pressure. And Smith was up to the task, left on an island against a very good player we've talked about all night in Jared Brown. Third and one for Tim Beck's team. Feels like they need to score on this drive. Yeah, they do, but first things first, got to pick up this first down, and, and I don't, I think you can do whatever you want here, because this is four down territory. They went to Bennett, used the 215 pounds, that strong lower body, to get a gain, and right now it looks like it would, looks like it would move to chain where they're spotting it, and that will be the case. Yeah, now the Shaws have to get up to the line of scrimmage. I, I think they need to move quicker, Jason. This, I know they're looking to the sidelines for the play, but they've got to speed this thing up. his way down inside the 25 and when you see that late shift from Bennett it's been 100% run if you're Georgia Southern you got to see that just before hitting the ball he shifted from one side to the other every time he'd done it tonight it was a running play gain of 18 that time incomplete pass on the ensuing play one in Matt Alimo the tight end Justin Myers on the coverage this drive takes, the more pressure it is on the shot to clears to have to score a touchdown. We talked about the clock not quite being an enemy yet. With every tick, it's becoming more and more your foe, though. You need to score quickly. It doesn't have to be seven, but the longer you take to get there, it needs to be seven. Tim Beck said we need to score more in the red zone. Mm. McCall, what a fake. Flag goes flying, though. Here's a flag back near where the play started. I think they got Zach Elon. He was pleading his case, and you don't usually plead your case unless you know you did something wrong. Number 57. Seventy-two. That was number seventy-two, Evan Jumper. Second time he's been charged tonight. And remember, filling he, in for yeah, Thomas Johnson, who what, started the game. That's right. We, when your backup center has to come in, it's usually an issue for most teams. Usually, you don't have two quality centers. They're just hard to find. Not just necessarily because he's a bad player, but you don't get enough reps. That's a relationship that takes a lot of time. And under, maybe the most underrated relationship in football, you think, Q QB center? No question, because you, first of all, you got to get the snap right, but there's so many calls that the center has to make at the line of scrimmage. If you don't get the reps, you're going to struggle. 
And it has Pinckney dragged down by Shamar Bartholomew. Driving and then driving on the ball. When you're six foot four, 200 pounds, you, be, you become basically a rebounder when the ball's coming. You put your back to the defender and force him not to go through you. And if he does, it's a penalty. If he doesn't, it's a catch. Third and eight, a big one for Coastal Carolina. You can't get too greedy here if you're Grayson. This is four down territory. Take what the defense gives you. Watch the quarterback run game, too. Has another connection. That ball came out at the end. Pinkney had it, lost it, then bounced on at the tail end of the play there by Tucker. But they call it an incomplete. I think they're going to look at it. Yeah, I think they're going to look at this. There's the route combination to clear out there by number 21. Is that a catch and a fumble or an incomplete pass? Field is an incomplete pass. Did he secure this football? So that's the question. I think he's tucking that. And that, you know, that's not the best angle. But he looked to me to catch that, tuck it, and put it away. Fourth and eight. Maybe the biggest play of the game. Timeout. That prior play, which would have huge implications. So, good decision here to take a look at this. Like you said, it was questionable. And again, it was recovered by Jamison Tucker. He's got that ball secured to me. Now, he, he catches it. He puts it away. Puts two hands on the ball. Great job of punching it out. Two-hand catch. Puts it away. Tucks it. And the ball doesn't come out on its own. It gets punched out. I think that's a catch and a fumble. I love the, the work by Shamar Bartholomew making a start here, of punching that ball out. And then you just got a great hustle to get a recovery. Jamison Tucker is Johnny on the spot, but I mean it's a close, it's a close catch. And, and remember, the call in the field is that it it's incomplete. But I just think that's enough evidence of a guy catching the football, getting both feet down, tucking the ball. Uh, that's not the most egregious call I've ever seen. I personally think though that was a catch and fumble. So instead brings up another go with that fourth and eight. So now this is the play of the game, like you talked about, so far. The good news is you don't have to go to the end zone. Look for stick routes, Jason. Routes running right to the sticks to the first down marker. But you got to make sure you get there and get beyond in case you have to come back to the ball. The worst thing you can do is run this route before the sticks. McCall once Brown did he make the grab in bounds he did what a catch they got nine on fourth and eight how about that well first of all it's a cool customer standing down around pressure coming around him like the route beyond the sticks and watch him snatch it and pull that ball away you see him snatch it and pull it away so the defender couldn't come in late and knock it away that's big league football by Jared Brown. That's why I love this conference. You got these calm, cool characters in these big moments. <laughs> Fourth yeah. and eight. Crowd is at full throat. Didn't affect McCall at all. He's been there, done that. Fired up on the sideline right now is Clay Helton. Uh, he was out to the 20. So, so Apoplectic. He, so here's what's interesting. You're going to see a late bobble by Brown. I saw it. Watch the late bobble. There's the hands. There's, you can't see it there, but there's a little bit of bobble there. Was that secured in bounds? That's Another yes. conversation coming up here. Oh. See that there? Ah, see, does he have to? Ooh. 
<laughs> see there? And look at the foot was wait until this toe. Yeah, but look, you're gonna see you're gonna see air again though. So he's gonna have it down. But watch beyond this though, beyond right here, he's gonna lose possibly lose possession of the football, control of the football very briefly at the end. Right there. See, he kind of lost control of that ball. Wow. On the field, it's a completion. I, this is close. Snatches the ball away, but the defender still gets a piece of his forearm. Clay Helton really thinks this was uh, yeah, this is incompletion. Close. He was all the way out on the 20-yard line calling for this to be reviewed. I think there, though, before the bobble, I think it stands. The ruin of stands. First down. Yeah, it's close. It will stand. To keep this coastal drive alive and keep their chances of potentially getting back within 10 alive. How about the execution, though, when they needed it? Uh -huh. Again, yep, yep. Brown running beyond the sticks, right? And then your quarterback staring down a heavy rush and delivering a catchable ball towards the outside so the defender could not get there. Both coaches told us the best assignment sound football team that controls the emotion of the game will come out on top today. Can't help but try to think about the, the thoughts going through these coastal players' heads right now, thinking they could have to score here. And they come up big on fourth and eight. McCall had his receiver slip. Might have led to a holding call, potentially. No question. They just had to literally hold on for about two seconds longer because the play didn't go where they thought it was initially going to. Yeah, that was a great rush on the outside. I believe that was Isaac Walker who was turning the corner. Might have been Davion Rhodes. Yeah, Davion Rhodes is saying that was yeah. holding. <laughs> but when you turn a guy around... Holding, holding. 64 offense. Two-yard Yep, Zovon Lindsay. Yeah, you see, when you turn a guy around like that, I mean, that's pretty obvious. Justin Rhodes got held there. Nice job of dipping and ripping around the corner, forcing the hole. Pushes back Coastal Carolina to first and 20. So, again, we talked about the later this drive goes, the longer it takes, it puts more and more pressure that you have to get six here because it's not going to be enough possessions otherwise. Coastal Carolina has the weapons, including Sam Pickney. They trailed by double digits against Georgia Southern last year in Conway, South Carolina. Came back and won that game with 38 seconds left. They're trying to pull off another comeback against Georgia Southern in the second half today. And Southern's been blitzing a lot here on this drive. If they blitz again, and I'm Grayson McCall, I'm looking to throw a 50-50 ball to Pinkney. Pinkney's at the bottom of your screen. They're looking for him. They want the end zone. He was open, but the connection wasn't there. He was wide open, but they didn't have him. Oh, my wow. goodness gracious. A missed opportunity oh. in the books. So they went zone coverage. And Pinkney ran an out and up. There's the manipulation with the pump fake, and he's wide open, folks. Don't miss the layup. Oh, my goodness. He missed the layup. The best news about that is it's still second down. You can do it again. Retry. Second and 20. Can they get that look again? They get some yardage here. Kendall Carr able to make the play. Big tight end, 6-3. Averaged eight rebounds per game in high school as a basketball player. It's a rare catch by Carr. Only his ninth of the season. Had two of them last week. But that's a good job by McCall finding the open man and hitting him. Again, you need seven points here in this situation. This drive is taking too long. And I don't like the... the they need more tempo. I, I just don't like how long it's taking to get the ball snapped. McCall tucks and runs. Just stayed alive, then got chopped down. Brings up another fourth down. And a big decision coming up here. You would need to get to the four-yard line for a first down. That's a great point. You don't necessarily have to throw the football into the end zone. I would have a, some sort of combination route where you got an underneath defender at the sticks 
and you have a deeper defender in the end zone. The question is, will this be man coverage? Will they rush? Will they bring people? And if they do bring people, I'm looking for 15, who appears to be double covered at the bottom of the screen. Bartholomew is the one defending him. Timeout called. Georgia Southern. Georgia Southern. So first to the half. 30 seconds in the Well, look, that time they lined up two receivers on Sam Pinkney. They, they're saying effectively, you're not going here. You have to look elsewhere to convert on this fourth down. We're not going to allow you to throw it to the best NFL prospect on the field. And I like that decision by right there by defensive coordinator Brandon Bailey. Take them away right now. I mean, <laughs> there it is right now. We, we don't, we're not trying to disguise it. We don't care. You're not throwing the football here. Look elsewhere. Well, they've got options on the other side. We know Jared Brown is a big-time receiver as well, so he'll have man coverage. But I think that's smart. Brown has seven catches for 93 yards today. Don't forget about the running back, Brayden Bennett, either. Now, sometimes, though, Jay, look, you, you've got a guy who's so talented and so good, I'm still going to go after him if it's double coverage. This time you got a different look from the secondary. You don't see that guy lining up in double coverage. But you can best believe they're going to roll the coverage to number 15. McCall steps up. McCall sees room. There's a flag down in the holding zone. McCall knocked out of bounds at the one-yard line, which would, of course, give him the first down here. But, but, we're going to see if this is coming back. No question it's coming back. And the question is, was it necessary? There's no flag on the way. Wow. <laughs> no flag. And McCall, the gutsy veteran, gets to the one-yard line and gives Coastal the second fourth down conversion on this drive. Well, now, number 13, Isaac Walker, is upset, and I understand why. He ran over an offensive lineman and got pulled to the ground. Number 13, Isaac Walker, was running an ET stunt, hit the offensive lineman. The offensive lineman pulled him down. Should have been a holding call. It was not play on. Grayson McCall, 29-7 and seven as a starter. Once win number 30 tonight. Hands it off. Bennett barrels into the end zone. Coastal Carolina, a lengthy drive to keep themselves in this football game. A team that found themselves down 10 against Georgia Southern a season ago came back to win that game. They're in the same position now, down 10 in the fourth quarter. discussion on what this flag is about and this could be t potentially if it's against coastal dead ball foul especially if it's going to coastal this going to be a problem the result of the play is a touchdown after the play that's forced by combat number two offense and penalty could be assessed on the penalty team for the kickoff the penalty team for the kickoff well I, I think if Look, if, if I am head coach Clay Helton, I'm, I'm going to say you need to enforce him to kick off. Yeah, that's smart because now you're forcing the back up 15 and it's going to give great field position potentially to the Eagles. What a costly penalty there. It was. Liam Gray's going to try to tackle on this extra point to make it a 10-point game. Does just that, so two score difference now. Again, a little deja vu between these two teams. You look at last year's matchup, Coastal was down 10 late in the second half, came back to win it. That's their goal again today on the road. Live your rewards. The Georgia Southern head coach Clay Helton showed his team in the meeting the other day a, a clip with 38 seconds left of Coastal Carolina taking the lead against them a season ago. 
Coastal. That was after Georgia Southern had the double-digit second half lead. Said that clip still haunts me. It really haunts me. They don't want that to happen again today. They're up 10. Similar situation. Bit of deja vu. Different setting, though. And a sold-out crowd here at Bolson Stadium trying to implore their team to the finish line. DeAndre Buchanan on the return here. Take a peek at what Georgia Southern has done in the second half here. You, you think they need a drive that's going to eat up the clock right now. Nice, long, multiple first down drive, eating up clock. Any points here will be devastating. So that's all you got to do. And if you figure we just have ball security and do what we've been doing, we'll be fine. If you decide to clear, look, you came in to this game in the top 15 in the country and forcing turnovers. Boy, it would be a really good opportunity now to set your offense up if you get one of those now. They call it the prettiest little stadium in America, and they have enjoyed watching Davis Brin during his brief tenure so far as an Eagle. Well, they flip it out, tried to... Set up a cop in space and then a, maybe a late hit here and a personal foul going to be charged to the typically very disciplined Juan Powell. Well, that's just crazy. Well, I have no idea. And then maybe he thought the ball was fumbled and he was trying to dive in the ball. And I think that's a discussion right here. Yeah. But that was a double pass they were setting up right there, Jason. They had multiple receivers streaking downfield. That was an amazingly good call in this situation because you know the defense is going to be over aggressive. Dalen Cobb. <laughs> To your point, Dalen Cobb is a former high school quarterback. So you, you may have been on to something here. Well, look at the depth of the throw. You see him getting deep there, and the ball was inaccurately thrown, but I don't... He lost it there. I'm not sure. I mean, this is college football. When the knee's down, the play's over. Juan Powell, what are you doing? Too good for that. Next level, that would be... The case where that he would be the right. Play. That's right. And we think he can play at the next level. No doubt. But that right there, that 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 was painful. Timing-wise, you simply can't afford that right now. Oh, what a fake! And then a throw down the seam with Caleb Hood on the receiving end. The tighter the ball game, the more important the execution. And like you said, the ball handling. The accurate throw in a tight window. He's given us the entire bag tonight. He continues to do it. Talking about Davis Brent. Not a former multi-sport athlete on this Georgia Southern team. It's like they're kind of playing basketball up there. They're like faking people out <laughs> with their handles a little bit. Brent has pressure coming from the backside. Stalks. Got it away. Wanted Hood. McDoom on the coverage. How about the aggressive break call by Brian Ellis? Let's not forget Jalen White has had an exceptional ball game. Carlos Hatcher came around on the edge there, mm -hmm. trying oh. to track him down. Yeah. If I'm the Sean's defense right now, I think this is almost 100% run. They fake it. Maybe they did think it was run. Yeah. Well, that's the RPO. And when you see, if you're Davis Brand, if you see the look you like with the open area for the slant, you fake the run and throw the and throw the slant right across the middle. Nice job there of executing. Starting to get in a real groove with groove with Caleb Hood. Brings up third and two. That was, a, that was a very important play right there because, like you said, it brings up third and two. So now the entire playbook is open. Brian Ellis can call it whatever he wants. And defensively, you can't set your sights on just one thing. Defensively, biggest third down of the game, and there looks to be some confusion. And now a readjust and a totally different empty backfield shotgun formation. They went to Hood again. Wow. He just pulled multiple tricks out of the bag and had Coastal scrambling. Yeah, so they, they were in a big people look with regular people in the game. They were really tight like they were going to run the football. Late shift. Now you got athletic players shifting out of that big people look. And you snapped the ball quickly. All you needed was two yards. You got plenty. I don't even know how you adjust to that that quickly. It's tough. Brin's ninth career 300-yard game. And that was a crucial first down in this football game. 
So this is the window dressing. Again, you're showing like this is going to be a run. Watch the formation. They're lining up like this is 22 personnel, two backs, two tight ends. Well, it's really not, though. Those are receivers that are breaking this formation. And now you just want a quick little slant or a quick little turnaround route, really. It's hard to match up. You like a pre-snap chess match? I do. I do. Especially in this situation because the aggression of the defense, they're going to take the first thing they see. Oh, that pass was nearly intercepted. Second near interception of the game for Clayton Isbell. How good is this Isbell? He might have two picks today when he looks back on this film. Man, he is so good. He's so, the film study, you know it's there. Watch this guy jump the route. Look at Isbell. He's all over it. He knows exactly where that ball's being thrown. And he almost made an amazing play. You said that you used to call Nias Williams, they used to call him lucky, lucky. in practice. <laughs> but it's about being in the right place at the right time because of how you practice. Oh, what a grab! Speaking of the practice field, translating to the game, Derwin Burgess climbed the ladder and made a tough catch, contested those strong hands of his. Such a security blanket when you can believe in and lean on receivers making tough catches in traffic. Man, that's strong hands right there under duress. And that shoulder's hurting. He's one of those guys that's always hanging out in his offensive coordinator, Brian Ellis's office, watching film and trying to find where those soft spots can provide themselves. He's got this clock under six minutes now. And this is where he can go back to the ground. Yeah. I think the rest of this drive... You're going to involve Jalen White either faking it to him or running it. This is your hammer offense. You're getting down under five and four minutes. You see this offense slowing down. This is smart. Running clock. The clock is an extra defender, extra impediment to winning for the Santa Clears. Use it if you're Georgia Southern. O.J. Arnold, oh, what a job to slip through traffic. O.J. Arnold. Flag down in the backfield. But that won't stop us from looking at this move. <laughs> we talked about he nine rushes for 90 yards last week. It's one of the places where there's holding, but it's too good not to take a peek at it. Yeah, you're talking about as quick as a hiccup. Look at that move on the outside. And then, bam, right back to the inside. That is big time, but fresh legs, too. That's where a one-two punch can be devastating for a defense this late in the game. Yep. Terrence Gibbs got some work last week when Jalen White was out, but to have Jalen White back just makes this running game so dynamic. It's helped this offense look so balanced today. And it's hard to ever really find your footing. I'm not sure if Coastal Carolina has really ever found their footing against this offense that gives you so many looks. Bryn faked it one way, threw it back to Hood. To that point, Taoka, Brian Ellis told us, pulled out the Mike Leach, well, the great Mike Leach, who said, you know, to be a balanced offense, that means everyone on your offense producing at the same level each game. Maybe not necessarily so much on pass, but people producing, and they have a lot of players producing at the same level each game. Yeah, exactly. It's the threat of the balance, in other words. Yeah. The ability to get all of your playmakers involved so the defense can't key on one thing. Now, that holding penalty was very big in this drive. This is obviously one of the biggest third down, if not, I guess, the biggest third down. Let's say it right now, the biggest third down for the Sunday Clears defense. Time out, Georgia Southern. If there's any life left for Coastal Carolina, it's a stop here. And we'll see if they can get that when we come back to Statesboro. Point Georgia Southern lead. They're trying to close the door on maybe their biggest home game since moving up to the FBS level. It's Craig Niver, the defensive coordinator for Coastal Carolina. He was doing a lot of coaching over the last several minutes. Does he bring pressure? 
and go one on one on the outside against these receivers, or do you play coverage? They're showing pressure. Another fake in the run game, and they throw it to the tight end, Keaton Upshaw. Had a touchdown last week. They're going to bring up about fourth and 11 here. We'll see if they bring out the field goal unit. Interesting decision for Coastal Carolina to use a timeout. Yeah, here. smart. I like that. I like that call. Every second counts now. It's only 409. You need two scores. You need two touchdowns. Yep. So if you coach Nybar, you got to be happy with how your defense played at the end of that drive. You wish you had gotten a three and out for the turnover that you desperately needed, but you stood up late. Now, can you get a rush without roughing the kicker and force an incomplete or, excuse me, a missed field goal? Forty yarder. Michael Lance one for one today was four for four last week. Has been very consistent on the season for this Georgia Southern team. Transferred from Minnesota back to his home state. Oh, that one doinks off the upright, and it's no good. Keeping it a 10-point game with 4.04 to go in the fourth quarter. Beautiful shot at Boston Stadium. Did Freedom Eagle get us this shot? Is what I'm wondering here. He did his flyover before the game. That's Cap. That's Cap. That's not, that did not. And there he is. First of all, he's, now. he's got his eyes covered, bro. And uncover his eyes. Pretty sure Freedom can see. <laughs> he's, got he's got mufflers over his eyes. Oh, boy. Well, he would like to see a clean final 404, but Coastal Carolina got a missed field goal. A rare one this season from last sent the Georgia Southern defense creeping up on the edge there was Isaac Walker. Talked about these edge rushers for Georgia Southern. They come up big here. Well, just like pass routes, you can have rush lanes help each other. So you got one defender going underneath and one coming all the way around the outside. The underneath defender was that is Davian Rose. He forces the quarterback to the outside and Walker comes all the way around that speed and gets a big sack. It's a hard hit. You saw the ball actually come out there. The McCall pushed back. It was a loss of 10. Huge Brown eludes one tackle. Balletic balance to stay in bounds. <laughs> Ultimately, Marquez Watson Trent came over to push him out. But Brown just trying to keep this team's hopes alive. And that was a huge play to get those extra yards because that would have set up a third and immensely long. If he goes out here. He may have, but it's moved now. Shamar Bartholomew missed on the tackle. But now, yeah, like you said, this pending call here could maybe set him back. Untimely penalty. I mean, that just uncalled for. Three snap penalties will make all coaches pull their hair out. Third down, definitely four down territory now. McCall improvising just needs something to break down. It never did. From Georgia Southern was brilliant in the secondary. Also came into this game forcing 13 more penalties from their opponents than they actually made. And in this game, they've gotten their share of penalties, especially timely ones, and it probably could have been a holding call in that last play. Pro 
program record for attendance. Clay Helton visited students this week, calling for them to come to the game. Those students have been standing up all game. This crowd may have a chance to put the stamp on this one. Right now, they're marking this a yard short. It is a yard short. And Georgia Southern will take back over on downs. up this program in a short time vocally and enthusiastically and you can feel his energy bleeding through to this fan base tonight in Statesboro. If you watch football on TV, you... 10 point Georgia Southern lead. There's the Southern Bald Eagle freedom. It'd be a pretty tough route to govern. Well, don't forget you can wake up to the only show dedicated to football. It's Good Morning Football. Get a full wrap up of week four, including the Falcons game in London versus the Jags. Good Morning Football, Monday through Friday at 7 a.m. only on NFL Network. I'm glad they took the earmuffs off his eyes. I never saw that. We have to go back and watch the film. This is good film to watch if you're a Georgia Southern fan. Jalen White back. And he looked like he hasn't missed a beat. This is a complete offense. They can run it. You're going to have to play a clean game defensively if you want to beat these guys because they can do multiple things with number 25, Jalen White, back in the lineup. And, and again, those were earmuffs on his eyes. Did you say earmuffs on yes, his eyes? Yes, because did you see it? I kind saw of an oxymoron. No, it's not. Earmuffs are very versatile things. You can do multiple things with them. They put them over that poor bird's eyes. I think that's a real thing. <laughs> Under two minutes to go in this fourth quarter. And Georgia Southern offensively just trying to run it out now. This pass incomplete. No one's really understand why we're throwing the football. Uh, yeah, got me fooled there. I, seems like you just want to run the clock out to this point, of course, still minute 46 to go. Yeah, don't, uh, you don't want any potential danger through the air. Well, when you throw it, it could be incomplete, stop the clock, or it could be an interception, tip ball, anything can happen. You sack calls fumble. You, you got Jalen White in the backfield. Go ahead and run the football. And that's been such a key storyline tonight on the opposite side. Three very uncharacteristic, actually the first ever three interception game for Grayson McCall. They go back to the ground here. And McCall, only player in this conference's history, to win the Sunbelt Conference Player of the Year Award three different times. Such a good QB. But this Georgia Southern defense turned him over today. Just think of this, talking about McCall. Coming into this game, his career TD to interception ratio was 82 touchdowns to 10 interceptions for his career. The last two years combined, he only had five interceptions. He's got five interceptions this season. So that's just something that has to get right. He's a, he's, he didn't become a bad football player over the summer. This coaching staff talked about how quickly they've come together with one another and been so comfortable. This is all the players together building and bonding with chemistry. They call this the baptism in the creek on the final day of camp before the first game week started. You bring on the new freshmen and some of the new transfers. Clay Helton comes after a hard practice and they all jump in the creek. Yeah, look, I'm, I'm taking a Clorox bath after that. I'm just telling you. It's right not now. the cleanest creek and don't tell you that. Look at the color of that water, bro. I'm just, that's all I'm saying. Keep the I don't tradition alive, but bathe in Clorox after you're done. I don't think they would blame you either. But it's a cool tradition to kick off the season. And now they're really rolling here in Statesboro as a flag comes out to the tail end of that run. Going to improve to 4-1. 1-0 and one. One and oh in conference play. This flag is against Georgia Southern. Oh, Here's Clay Helton. 
his staff. Brandon Bailey talked about the defense. He's the defensive coordinator. has done an excellent job today. Brandon Bailey graduated from Georgia Southern in 2016. Told us he still hasn't woken up from the dream of being back at his alma mater. The offensive coordinator, Brian Ellis, was with Clay Helton at USC. Those two reunited. There's such a good chemistry on this staff. They didn't care at all about the preseason expectations. They're creating new standards. Literally a program record in attendance tonight. And with their Power 5 pedigree, they, they can dip into the portal and tell guys that, listen, we know how to compete at the highest level with some great players who went on to play in the NFL. You can come and work in our system and show off. So this is going to be one thing that Coach Helton is going to talk about before anything else, and that's the penalties. That's 10 penalties now for 90 yards. You don't typically win games with that stat, but they got away with it today. You, you can't keep doing that, though, in this division in the Sun Belt. You feel it might run through James Madison. By the way, Troy handled Georgia State tonight, so Georgia State no longer unbeaten. Georgia State, of course, beat Coastal Carolina last week. So it's going to be two straight losses for Coastal Carolina. Kind of uncharted territory for them to drop to 0-2 in Sunbelt play. Marshall's defense, they're currently 3-0 and un unbeaten. I mean, that's that's a defense that's one to watch. This Georgia Southern team has James Madison on Tuesday, October 10th. That's going to be quite the showdown. That, that, that East, that Sunbelt East is something. Stacked. Yeah. Stacked. App State was in a really close game tonight. It's like it's like the it's like the Big Ten East. Where you got Penn State, Michigan, Ohio State on one side of the ledger. This is East heavy in this Southern Louisiana Monroe, who you got to watch in person this year. They're currently up 40 to 35 on App State going into the fourth quarter. I mean, the offense in this league, it's really fun to watch. It's no longer a secret how good this league is. And Clay Helton said, the next step for us is winning a game of this stature. You got to beat the division champs to be the division champs. And then he said, you know about this league, we talk about the depth of it. When the playoff expands to 12 teams, they want to be in that conversation of being maybe the next Cincinnati, who now has, of course, moved up. Being the next to UCF. As that kick may have been partially deflected. They want to be in that category. And what we've seen from this conference is the change in the offense. This should be a run-heavy conference. Now you're seeing more diversity in the offense. They can throw the football. you got teams that can run the football. you got teams like Southern who can do both. I mean, so you just see more offense. It's always had great athletes defensively. Just, it's just a, a very top-to-bottom, very talented conference, and I think the best group of five in America. See the James Madison game there. And then this UL Monroe team that's sneaking up on some people yeah. this year. I mean, uh, you know. Texas State pulled off an upset earlier this year. There's no gimmies on that, on that uh, schedule. You've got to bring it every single week. Can you play at a high level each and every week? That's what it's about, consistency. Grayson McCall and this Coastal Carolina team. What's the reset mindset here like? Well, you got to look at the film and be honest with yourself. Be honest about the mistakes that were made. Some of those interceptions was just sort of bad luck and happens. What can you do individually? Put it on yourself. Each man, put it on yourself. What can I do to help my team get better? By the way, beg your pardon, Saturday, October 14th, that James Madison game for Georgia Southern. I think one thing that Coastal found out is that they can run Grayson McCall more. I think they can get him involved in the quarterback run game that will take pressure off of this pass game. You've got to be able to establish a traditional run. You've got a lot of talent. Braden Bennett is an NFL player. Sam Pinkney is an NFL player. They think Grayson McCall will play in the National Football League. Jared Brown will have that opportunity. You've got to find ways to get everybody clicking on all cylinders at the same time. Max Baltazar scoots out of bounds with a minute to go here. 
in the game if you're Coastal Carolina. No timeouts here. Flag goes down way in the backfield. You would need a touchdown. And then, of course, an onside kick and some magic after that. Too many penalties and too many turnovers. We talked about Coastal being in the top 15 and forced turnovers coming in with nine. Well, they gave up three. They're down 0-3 in this game. So look no further into why they lost. You can't give up three turnovers on the road against a quality opponent and expect to walk out with a victory. Baltazar are again here. Like you said, the opportunities were there for Coastal Carolina, and they're going to watch this film and say to themselves, we could have done this if it weren't for the self-inflicted mistakes. Georgia Southern were able to overcome those penalties. First rule of winning, Jason, is that you can't beat yourself. And when you turn on the football, you're beating yourself. When you commit eight penalties, you're going to beat yourself, especially when you combine the penalties with the turnovers. Coastal Carolina on Tuesday, October 10th, will play App State. That's in Boone. That is intercepted the fourth of the day. Marquez Watson Trent, fourth different player with a pick. There is a flag down, so we'll see what this is for. Second time a Grayson McCall pass has been deflected and then intercepted today. Final stamp, fittingly, comes from Brandon Bailey's defense. This play is like a microcosm of the entire game. Protection's there. Ball thrown. Two hands on the ball. It goes through. It's picked. And even if he had caught the ball, it would have came back because of the penalty. So the turnovers and the penalties have mounted for this team. And you just can't shoot yourself in the foot continuously when you're trying to win a tough ball game on the road. Georgia Southern wanted the big stage. They got it, and they took advantage of it. In front of a program record 26,483 fans, they turned off the lights on this memorable night in Statesboro. Clay Helton is building something here, and building something special. The clip. Coastal Carolina taking the lead against Georgia Southern with 38 seconds left last week. Haunted him. Haunted him. Last year, that was what happened. Fittingly, they scored 38 points to beat him this year. 38 to 28, the final. Grayson McCall and Coastal Carolina will try to reset as they fall to 0-2 in conference play. And Georgia Southern gets their first Sun Belt victory of the season. Perhaps the biggest home win since they moved up to the FBS level. For Tioka Jackson, our producer Jeff Graham, director Kevin Schenk, everyone in the truck, you guys are phenomenal as always. I'm Jason Ross Jr. saying so long.